die! Die! Why won't you die? Why won't you die? Do you want to live through this? On ancient ground, a terrifying evil has been unleashed. Now, five strangers are our only hope to stop it. Oh, yeah! On Friday, January 19th. Richie, look out! The showdown is on. From Robert Rodriguez, from Quentin Tarantino, from dusk till dawn, rated R. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode three of Why Won't You Die? What is going on, Q? What up, man? <laughs> Yo, glad to be back again. Another week talking horror. You know what I'm saying? It's always a pleasure to talk with my boy Flix Talk. So let's get it in. Let's get it in, my friend. I know I kind of hit you up like last minute, too, just a couple days ago. I said, hey, man, I oh. saw this post where they celebrated the anniversary on January 19th. So uh, about a week ago or so, whenever we put this out, uh, January 19th, uh, 1996, my friend, from dusk wow. till dawn came out. And I was like, oh, wow. stop everything. Q, what are you doing, man? <laughs> we got to watch this, rewatch it because we had seen this movie before, too. Can mm -hmm. can you tell me, my friend, when was the first time that you first watched From Dusk Till Dawn? Yeah. Uh, now, now, damn, you're taking me back because I'm, I'm old. I, I went to go see Dusk Till Dawn in the theater. Like, I remember Ooh, driving there. Right when it came out, huh? <laughs> yeah, when it came out. The day it came out, actually, yeah. Because, um, uh, well, it had my boy Tom Zavini in it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Stella Cash, George Clooney. Um directed by uh this is robert rodriguez right? robert rodriguez directing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i don't this came after desperado uh, it believe, was right i want to say desperado came out in 94 i could be wrong let me look that yeah. up but um yeah it was yeah, it was it was, it was a couple years after it was a couple years after for sure yeah i remember i remember uh, desperado being fired and his name uh circulating oh. was fired and didn't have of course quentin tarantino attached so like i gotta see this first day and it's about vampires and uh <laughs> yeah i was there first day i think i went to see that in a small little theater in columbia tennessee uh open at night on, on friday and then um I think I had a date. I don't remember exactly who it was. So. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Back then, I was a little player. Play. How does that usually work, man? Because I never really, yeah, got that chance that I can think of, of taking a date to a horror. Like a, this is a full-on horror movie, by the way. Like, yes. re-watching it, my friend, like, I was like, this is like really gore like how how did they kind of release this in theaters and i know episode one we were talking about uh the evil dead it got the nc-17 rating this was kind of uh, uh pushing on those boundaries at least for me uh and we'll get into it with the trivia and stuff like that because there is some trivia that made this almost like past a rated r rating um but what, 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 what do you? I don't even know if you can remember that far back like what did your do you remember the reception from your date like what the hell is this <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, yeah. If I can remember, she knew I was into horror and stuff, too. But like, you know, yeah. um, so she wasn't too freaked out. <laughs> but but I remember she's being freaked out by the movie because she didn't think it was that wild. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I oh, mean, really? You know, we, we come from the Evil Dead. You know, like I'm saying, we, you know, like 87 Evil Dead 2. And, you know, what I'm saying oh, like yeah. you said, the first Evil Dead. Uh, I don't even think Dead or Alive was out at this time. Yeah, it was when it Dead or Alive. So, Peter Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I was I was on shit like that. I mean, and this is in the same vein. Um, so yeah, um, she she was cool with it. She was cool with it, I think. And then I had some of my boys there too. So we were all there like a late oh, night cool. Friday night as you know, like uh 96. Yeah, so I'm like a year or so out of high school. So it, it was just like a cool night, you know what I'm saying? Just go watch a um Robert Rag Regas movie with Quentin Tarantino and George Clooney in it. So it was just like a what a trip! A huh? dope Friday night thing, man. That's what I remember, and I remember them, we just talking about the movie and how dope it was. Everybody was cool, Everybody and that's cool. another reason why the movie theater experience is such a fun time. I mean, I don't go to the movie theaters mm -hmm. as often as I as I used to, um, just mainly because of time constraints. But when I did go, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially with friends and stuff like this, is before the pandemic when we're all hanging out, right? So, right. you know, that was the big thing. Is you know, you go to the movies you get all your snacks and stuff like that you get to see the and feel the reactions from the crowd and your friends whoever's sitting next to you and whatnot and then afterwards you know you go somewhere like either drink coffee or or, or uh, go grab a bite to eat or something you would talk about what you just witnessed right. and 
that's the cool thing about movies, man, is is especially horror movies, you know, um, you know, because we're specifically talking horror movies on this podcast, man, is that, you know, you you really kind of your minds start getting picked apart. Like, what was your favorite kill? You know, the special effects, uh, the storylines of certain characters and stuff like that, because I want to say that. You know, horror does, and I think I've said this before, but horror definitely does give a, a bad rap, especially the later horror movies, because, oh, you know, we know what we're in for because, you know, it could have cool special effects and all that stuff. But we know the story's going to be bad. We know the acting's going to be bad. But mm. definitely you get these gems where mm-hmm. good cast, you get some good solid writing, you get good performances. It, it, it's, it's Sometimes you get a balance of all of that. And before we dive into it, I definitely want to say from dusk till dawn was one of those that was hitting on all cylinders. Like it just wasn't a B horror movie. And I think when I looked up this uh, afterwards, a lot of people were like, this is a, a fun B horror movie. And I'm like, but but is it though? It's kind of like it's 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 kind of up there. I don't know. What what do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. Someone says this yeah, is a B yeah. horror movie. Yeah, it it follows in the vein of B horror movies on purpose, though. You know what I'm saying? It's the satire of that. You know what I'm saying? So they take elements of that on purpose uh, of the B movie, especially the second act. You know what I'm saying? But the first yeah. act was dead serious. Like what the like? Yo, I want to watch this movie because this is very very interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I guess we can spoil it now. It's been like 23 years later. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert, by the way, guys, in case yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. So, are just diving yeah, yeah. into this podcast. Uh, what we do here on Why Won't You Die is we do dissect and talk movies. I didn't really have any horror news to get into, so we could just get directly into the movie. I mean, until we find Julian Sands' body, I don't know what else we could talk about. Yeah, the warlock, man. Man, man. <laughs> I hope you're all right, bro. Yeah. He's gone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, man. Long, yeah, long, long, long story short, man. Julian Sands, uh, the actor of Warlock, a movie I did not see. Maybe we could watch it. I could rewatch. You could rewatch that. And I could watch it for the first time and, yeah, yeah. and we'll talk about it. But he is missing and uh, there's no real updates. He's been missing for, for a couple weeks now, I want to say. Yeah, about a couple weeks. Yeah, they found his friend. They didn't find him. So yeah, maybe he just ain't that crazy? Vanished. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god so, did, the, yeah. did the warlock have any powers in the movie maybe he zapped onto another planet or something yeah he was like a warlock he was like a, it was like the the craft <laughs> for a you know say a 45 year old man back <laughs> back oh in the day god. and that was a b movie you know what i'm saying to bring it back it's kind of a b movie but okay it's it's, it's slightly entertaining like the stepfather movies or you know what I'm saying oh my god. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I i definitely do oh you know what i did see i saw the stepfather the remake um oh they got a remake nice. there, there is a remake oh, with uh he was a pretty known actor that played the stepfather and we actually enjoyed it because we like those creepy but I, I don't remember any of the when did it come out in the 80s or 90s stepfather that had to be the 80s that had to be the 80s and then yeah, they had yeah, a bunch yeah, of sequels yeah. too yeah. right yeah stepfather three i think the first step i want to <laughs> Dude, i can just imagine step like him on the poster with a with a belt and just be yeah. like stepfather three he gonna whoop that ass <laughs> he gonna whoop that ass this time yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's funny dude yeah, well, yeah well, I, 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 I was gonna say i would love to dive into all those cheesy ass horror movies with you along the way man <laughs> yeah i haven't seen those in years but that used to be the hot shit that read at the video store that stepfather three son or stepfather two. Oh my god i think they, i don't know how many they are I, I just remember up to three and they used to change actors of oh, course that's the worst <laughs> I mean, I guess you got to come. One. Yeah, you got to come with a whole different story, though, every time, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe the first and second one had a sec, uh, same actors. I can't really be, uh, be verbatim on that, but I know the okay. third one was some total weird old guy or something that just didn't work. It oh, was man. Kind of trash. But yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah. I love those <laughs> movies like that. Stepfather. But they make them all hand in the racks, the cradle. They all the same movies. Stepfather. But yeah. I, lo- I love every every time. You yeah. Know? It's good, cheesy crazy, fun, perfect. man. But yeah, it's good, cheesy fun. Yeah, so back to From Dust Till Dawn, 1996. Um, I think the first time that I saw this, I, I can't even really remember. I want to say, I mean, it, it wasn't in 96. It was definitely whenever it came out on VHS uh, mm-hmm. after the fact. And it was one of those, like, my dad rented or something like those. You know, I think we talked about it before. You rent the three movies from Blockbuster, Hollywood Video. Yeah. And it was it's always like, three. Yeah, always three. <laughs> and, and, and then that weekend, you got to watch them, man. And I, I want to say my dad had gotten that one, and I was over there. I mean, I was old enough to watch it. So I was definitely on the couch, like, looking like this with my, you know, you look like this on the couch, just kind of looking through, just like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. you know, what yeah. the hell is this? And it was pretty wild, especially watching it at, at about, like, age, I don't know, 12, something like that. 
you know, nice. around that time, 13, I want to say. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, you know, I was definitely yeah, introduced yeah. to uh, uh, um, to horror when I was younger and stuff like that, but I definitely found a more appreciation for it uh, in my later years. Uh, but one thing I wanted to clarify before we get uh, deep into it, I think I had said when we were talking about budgets on The Evil Dead, we were talking about different people's budgets. And Robert Rodriguez did come up. And I think I had said something about El Mariachi got, uh, had a budget of like 50000 I was totally wrong because I look back on that. It was $7,000 he made that movie. Get out of here, son. No way, $7, man. $7,000 for real? Yes. Jan, that's crazy. Yeah. That's insane because it yeah. looked like the production value in that movie, if I can remember, it looks way more expensive than $7,000. And then after Get that, my friend, here. yeah, the big studios, I want to say it might have still been Miramax because, so we were talking about Desperado. That actually came out a year before. Uh, Dust Till Dawn. Mm-hmm. So he only had a year uh, to write this. Uh, well, I don't know if he was, how, how long he was writing the story for, but to put it into production after uh, Desperado was such a hit. So I, I, I want to say it was maybe Miramax. Um, I could mm-hmm. be wrong about that one. I'll have to. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because I know Miramax did right. this one, Dust Till Dawn, but they gave mm-hmm. him seven mil, bro. Imagine having 7,000 and then going to seven mil for your next project. That's I got to be Desperado? an awesome feeling. For Desperado. Oh, nice, nice. He, he put all that money on the screen, too, because that's an awesome little movie right there. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. So, Selma yeah. Hayek in that? Or I'm, I'm, I could be wrong. Yeah, that's that was the first time okay. we were kind of introduced. At least most of us were introduced, I want to say, uh, to her in that. I don't know her other pictures before that. I'll have to dive I don't know in. either. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it's like some of our first works, right? That's got to be her early work. Has works. to be. Has yeah, to be my she, friend. She blew up after that one, and then the one we're talking about two nights. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And there's a lot of trivia about that one, but I was just like, I, I was like looking, at, you know, you know, jumping ahead. But I was like, uh, 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 Richie Gecko man, just with his head like this, like just staring like that, with his yeah, mouth bro. open. I was exact. I was yeah. like that when I was rewatching it. I was like, this oh, movie my- definitely aged like a fine wine. I will say that, but it ha- mm-hmm. has a lot of rewatch value. Would you say? Ooh. Oh, well, we, we get into selling the higher part right now, or <laughs> no? We go wait, we go wait. Hold, simmer down, <laughs> simmer down now. <laughs> so, oh, from dusk till dawn, my friend. Uh, like you said, uh, writ- uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez, uh, written by Robert Kurtzman, and screenplay by Quentin Tarantino. Now, one bit of trivia uh, I-, I wanted to talk about before we get into it because it's a little quick, quick bite. Uh, but the reason why uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino was actually going to help direct this, he actually wanted to direct this movie completely, mm-hmm. um, but he really wanted to focus on his character as uh, Richard Gecko, Richie uh, Gecko in this character. And uh, we'll get into it. But uh, but I, I will say, I think I, I like the I like his decision, because, I mean, if he would have been behind the camera, I'm trying to think who else they could have got to play his you know uh character but I think he nailed this character because this is one of a this is definitely a standout character mm-hmm. where you don't want to root for him cuz he's such a bad guy but you hate to see him like get killed. I, I, that's how I yeah. felt. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same way. You feel kind of sorry for him in a way even though he's like a nasty perverted really, really bad crack, guy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like how he was skeeving on uh Julia Lewis's character. She was oh, like yeah. a a young girl too, like ugh. he was like, ugh. I was trying but, to figure yeah, out the age. Yeah, we'll go over the cast because I was trying to figure out the age. Um, but maybe we can talk about that real quick. I mean, what would you yeah. say that the age was? And this is a whole different uh, from the norm of what you usually see because obviously we have Harvey Keitel, uh, which is the father. Um, he's a white guy, and then you have uh, Juliette Lewis, who is also white, but she has the. Thickest Southern accent I've ever heard in my life, by the way. <laughs> so it's like, okay, yeah, it's yeah. like, wh- where is she from? Like, where does she fit in the picture? Was <laughs> was the mom super Southern or what? Okay, yeah. I guess that that could pass off, right? And she got it from the mom. Um, but then he also has an adopted son who is uh, Chinese, and then they're very close in age. Uh, the boy maybe looked, he looked younger, so maybe he was yeah. about fifteen. That's what I'm saying. And 14, she, 15. And she might have been around 16, I guess. 17 at the oldest? I don't know. I would say in the in the movie, not like in real life, but yeah, in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the movie. I would say that's what I'm saying. I'll say like uh 16, 17, 18, maybe. 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 Maybe 18. Yeah. Maybe. Her mannerisms, yeah. yeah, her mannerisms are she could play anything. It's like one of those like like a Jenna Ortega thing. Like at that at that moment in time, she could kind of play anything, I think. Yeah, right, right. I agree. Yeah. 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 
Because yeah. she did uh, California with Brad Pitt not too long after that. You know I did not. I, mean? I did not see that one. I know it's that California with the K. One. Is that a good one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, kind of a serial killer little movie too, with, with her crazy ass in it. And then of course <laughs> he was in Natural Born Killers. Yeah. Same same, same yeah. time. He liked she, to be it on the road doing crazy. He returned. Yeah, she returned in the Quentin Sphere, uh, which, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Quentin also wrote that screenplay for Natural Born Killers, and that was uh, directed by Oliver Stone, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Great move. Great movie. I mean, it's hard to say great when you're dealing with that subject material, but the great, the overall movie. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It had it had an amazing <laughs> impact. They need to get that on 4K, yeah. man, ASAP. But yeah, um, yeah come see that. Hold on. Great, Robert great Downey movie. Jr. is in there, fucking coked out. This is my. <laughs> one of yeah, one of the wildest. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's like a like a crit. Who was he supposed to be? Like a um, not Donahue. Uh, who's that? Geraldo, like a Geraldo or something? Yeah, like a remember Geraldo? Geraldo Rafi- <laughs> hey, you of remember course, you remember when Geraldo thought uh, uh when he was trying uh, to find boy. that uh with a Jimmy Hoffa Al or Al Capone. Al Capone safe? I watched that live on TV <laughs> as a child. We were all <laughs> gathered around. We were ready, we were ready to get. Oh, he's gonna find something in there. It's gonna be guns or dead bodies or skulls or whatever. And he opened it up. It was shit in there. But Nothing. Like I remember that. Yes. Yeah, I remember people that were, um, you know, born after the fact or didn't watch it live. You know, they they reuploaded the clip on on YouTube, and I remember watching that because it was like they were making it like a breaking news. Like we're about to, you know, uh, get the ratings up, man, with this one, and they had nothing, literally they didn't nothing find with that shit. <laughs> that is hilarious dude wow. yeah yeah i watched that live like well that was disappointing i right. was i was up past my bedtime too like i'm staying <laughs> up shit I, I might as well with this uh bed and went to school you know what i'm saying because uh, you know that was a waste of my time now i'm tired of school i'm gonna fail my math test because Geraldo right. didn't find shit in that safe Hey, Geraldo was a thug though. I remember he had his uh he had a he had a show, right? Like a like a talk yeah. show, right? And he fought the clan, he fought the Ku Klux Klan. He 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 took a he took a couple shots in the face. I remember that. He got his like yeah. nose busted open, man. He was nose kinda broke. yeah. Yeah, he was really uh he was a real one, man. He was getting those real those real yeah. <laughs> interaction with people, you know? Oh yeah, so. he was throwing blows. He was throwing blows. Geraldo. <laughs> that was a crazy that was the first time I really see reality TV people flip out. Cause they were talking to the clan and the black man got so bad he couldn't hold his he couldn't hold his anger anymore. Like ah! and he grabbed the <laughs> clan bit by his neck and shit just wowed out. So I'm like, wow. Imagine those yeah, this- I- I mean, I mean, not imagine, but remember those days of the talk shows, man. You had that. You had Ricky Lake. You had. We were just watching Ricky a couple Lake. other ones. Is it J- uh, Jenny Jones or Jim? Some Jenny someone Jones. Jones. Yeah, Jenny Jones. Jenny, I think. Jenny Jones. Yeah. yeah. yeah that had to be shut down because someone one of the guests killed someone. Remember that? That's what we saw. The clip yeah. was, uh, and they even put her on trial for all that, saying like, yeah. "Do you, you know, do you feel like you were responsible because you kind of like, uh, oh, that's what it was like. Uh, he had like a a, a secret lover, and he thought it was." Uh, this woman, a and woman. it was actually a, a man. It was actually like yeah. coworker or boss or something like that. Some, something like manager that. Yeah, or something. Out, yeah. Oh yeah, he made he, it seem like it was all cool on the show, and then afterwards he went to the guy's yeah, house and like, killed him because <laughs> he was laughing. <laughs> yeah, in his mind, like <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kill this guy. You know, what I'm saying? When we're wild. That. Yeah, yeah, that is so yeah. crazy. And her friend. show had to be canceled because of that too. It oh, is that old. right? I didn't know. I didn't know what happened after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it had to be done after that, you know. Wow, that was too contra, way too controversial, I guess. You, know? yeah. Talk show them. Same thing with uh, Catch a Predator. That show, they, they went to go catch somebody. The dude killed himself, and um, they, they, they got in a bunch of trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was, it, it was. He was like a attorney general too, and then he was, wow. he had, he was, you know, like he was um had a bunch of evidence of um they called him with you know like uh like stuff with little boys and stuff so Damn. they went to the camera crew went to his house but they didn't see it but like so before they got in he yeah he killed himself and yeah that was that was a pretty much a wrap for that show do you Dude. remember that show cheaters yeah Ooh, yes that host yeah. got stabbed too yeah dude that, that was crazy i, I seen that, <laughs> that yo fucking nuts Yo, but I'm thinking like, okay, he stabbed him, but the cameraman still got the camera. Like, you ain't gonna help him, but he is bleeding out. He is turning blue in yeah. front of our face. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna get the shot. Gotta get the shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wasn't it on a boat or something? Yeah, it was on a boat. He just immediately <laughs> snapped. They jumped on the boat with the guy. Shit, but they the jumped. guy didn't know what was going on. But he was like, ah. 
Bam! Yeah. Stand up inside. I was like, oh. That is so insane. The camera says, Let's go sit here. <laughs> Wild times of the man, the ni- 80s, yeah. 90s, and all that 90s, stuff. 90s. And this is the 90s, too. That's still dumb. Yeah. And this 90s. is crazy, too. All full circle, my friend. So let's go over this yeah. cast, man. We always go off on a tangent. Let's go over this yeah. cast. So I starting like off uh, top billing, we got George Clooney as Seth Gecko. Uh, we have Quentin Tarantino as brother Richard Gecko, a.k.a. Richie. We got Harvey Keitel as Jacob Fuller. We got Juliet Lewis as Kate Fuller. Uh, we have Ernest Liu who, as Scott Fuller. Uh, Salma Hayek as Santanico Pandemonium. Which is, there's some trivia about that name, by the way, because I know that, you know, that means uh, in English, uh, satanic pandemonium, pretty Um, self-explanatory. But there is a little bit of uh, a reasoning why they chose that name. And I thought it was cool. It's in the trivia. The name sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But when you really think about it, you're like, okay, uh, this is a a red flag that this woman, uh, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know. Yeah, for real. Um, We have Cheech Marin as, uh, well, he actually plays three characters, Cheech. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows Cheech from the Cheech and Chong movies, um, which, man, I I really wish we had a comedy podcast. We could talk that because these guys have Mm -hmm. some stories on screen, my friend, just like drugged out making those movies. You you, you thought Mm -hmm. how high was crazy. (laughs) (laughs) These guys were shit. But we got, yeah, we got Cheech playing... um, Three characters in this, which I thought was a unique, but I thought they I thought they fit. We'll go we'll go over it once we're introduced mm-hmm. to him. Uh we got Danny Trejo as Razor Charlie. I didn't know that was his name. Mm. The, w- razor Charlie. Razor, yeah. like a straight up razor, like a razor blade, his name was. Yeah. But okay. That's a cool name. Uh then we got some side cast. I mean, I guess uh Cheech and and, and Trejo and, and Salma would be considered side characters, but uh also mm-hmm. co-starring uh Tom Savini as Sex Machine. And uh That's my you boy. know what? I had to look this up. Was Tom Savini involved in any of the makeup in this? Um, I saw a different not production really. company. Uh, that's Greg Nicotero, his protege, actually, who actually uh, went okay. on. He, he did he did Creep Show. He, he was a protege on the first Creep Show, and then he did most of the effects. K&B uh, makeup did most of the effects for Creep Show too. And okay. of course, you know, down the road, he did you know The Walking Dead and pretty much a lot, a lot of stuff in Hollywood we can name. But right. the thing about Tom Sabini, um, he kind of stopped doing makeup because his, his his hands started to crank up a lot. He had a oh. documentary come out, yeah, like so he couldn't really do makeup um, at, at that age or, or whatever, you know, when he got to that age because his, his hands were was messed up at that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that too along the way. Uh, we also have Michael Parks, who's who I, I think is awesome. Uh, it's been a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies. We only see him in the beginning uh, as Texas Ranger Earl uh, McGraw, I believe it is. Kind of cut off her hair, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then we also had Fred Williamson, someone I'm not really privy to. I have to look him up, but he was huge, a huge star, right? Like in the, oh, yeah. like the whole Black seven, like exploitation, area, Black exploitation yeah. 70s yeah. and all that, uh, as Frost. These are characters that have names. I don't remember hearing their name in the movie. Do you? <laughs> no, I don't. So I was like, damn, that, that, that vampire, and I never heard of that before. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah, straight up Frost. And then there's a lot of different cameos that we get. We get John Hawks, who plays uh, um, the liquor store cl- clerk at the beginning. Even John mm-hmm. Saxon, bro. Remember, he was mm-hmm. on TV as a sheriff? That's all we get to see of him. Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah, I which, remember, yeah. Uh, which you guys have seen in Enter the Dragon and Nightmare, uh, Nightmare. Nightmare on Elm Street uh, as uh, Nancy's uh, father. So mm-hmm. some some cool some cool cast we got here, man. Mm-hmm. So, Love John Saxon. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's get into this premise, my friend, uh, before we get into the initial movie, what it's about dissecting, not scene by scene, but just kind of our thoughts along the way. Mm-hmm. And like you had talked about earlier, the second part of this movie definitely feels like a whole different pace and a whole different Love vibe, that. which it absolutely is. And I, I absolutely want to talk about that 100 percent with you. So uh, mm-hmm. two criminals and their hostages unknowingly seek temporary refuge in a truck stop populated by vampires with chaotic results. OK. So this movie out the gate starts off with kind of a side blind. You know, you're thrown into this scene uh, uh, with Michael Park's character as a sheriff. And then you also have um, John Hawks, uh, who plays the store clerk. It was like Benny's World of Liquor or something. Remember the store? Yeah. Benny's World of Liquor. I think that's the name of it. Yeah. Out in the middle of nowhere, right? Um, Do they say where this is from? They just say that they're heading towards Mexico. but So it has to be one of these border... Arizona uh, uh, states or something, 
right, yeah. right? I don't know. Te- maybe yeah. even Texas. Oh, it might have been Texas, actually, because Michael Parks is Texas as hell, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a soup. By the way, what, what, when he talks, c- can you understand anything without subtitles when this guy's talking? Not really. How much you want for that hooch, Pete? I want six fifty. Jesus Christ. You bucking for early retirement? Shit. <laughs> he's like, he's like he yeah, he, he goes, it's hotter than a goddamn dog. And did and did. Like, what the fuck? I had to turn on my subtitles, bro. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You get <laughs> but everything he was saying was really funny. And like the comparisons, I was like, this is definitely Quinn writing. Like, for sure. mm-hmm. And if That's you guys, yeah, if you guys don't know Michael Parks' work, uh, uh, you definitely seen him as once again, the sheriff in, uh, uh, he was in death, um, Death Proof. He was in uh, uh, Kill Bill. Uh, he I played the same exact character in every single one. It, Damn, he's good every, every time he had it. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Quinn's like, I'm going to hire you for this movie. You're going to play a Texas Ranger in every single one. He's like, I'm there. I'm there. I just be my yeah, I'm there, yeah. I'm yeah. Bitch, bitch, bitch. I, I always I'm chewing on something. He's like, how much for that hooch right there? Six dollars? <laughs> Woo-wee! You're looking for early retirement? <laughs> <laughs> I loved him. I really loved him. Well, we get to see him only for a short time on screen as the Gecko Brothers pull up, and and uh, Clooney man puts one in his freaking brain. Or was it Clooney or was it someone puts one in his brain? Though I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. And one thing I'm pretty sure it was it was uh, Clooney, but uh, one thing I didn't notice before and rewatching it back because this is a movie that I do love, but I don't feel like I rewatched it as much as I sh- like a Dawn of the Dead or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. But like I watch yeah. those ones are like Return of the Living Dead. They're like they're like fun movies and stuff like that. Uh, but this is a damn serious first act act of the movie. Um, but Michael Parks when he falls on the floor, this motherfucker's twitching. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. He's like yeah, shake yeah. like yeah. which was actually kind of haunting, man. Because it's like oh, his, <laughs> yeah. parts of his brain that's left intact is still like yeah. tweaking him out. I'm like yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, nervous system still tweaking off Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Like he's tweaking. Yeah, that 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 wasn't fun at all. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't, it wasn't oh. no fun part of that. This is like dead serious. Like wait, wait, I thought it was in this little fun vampire movie. Oh no no no, this yeah. this, this bank robbery shit is serious. Is is a heart attack. But yeah. the dialogue and everything is good. It's that Quentin Tarantino writing that just On point. have you glued and captivated to the screen. Like yeah, bring me more of this. Yes. And what what is it about uh, uh, the Tarantino dialogue that has fans absolutely going? It's either you absolutely love it as as a as a Quinn fan or a movie lover in general, or you absolutely hate it as someone that it, I feel like the people that usually hate this either one don't think that people really talk like this, or two just think it's uh, um, it's just too violent for the screen. What what what's your take on on Quentin writing and just dialogue in general? Because I think he that's the thing that people nitpick across. Uh, obviously, you know, since the movies that came out after this, uh, people were bashing him a lot for saying the n word. Like he says, the n- he has the, he has characters say the n word all the freaking time in his movies and stuff like that. I mm-hmm. just took it as uh, you know someone uh, uh, that's an avid movie watcher of just every genre as. I, I could imagine just characters saying this because I've heard characters in real life say this. So it's like, mm-hmm. if he's trying to add this layer of character, uh, uh, this character dialogue, it obviously is for an impactful reason. He doesn't just throw that word around for nothing. Like mm-hmm. usually the word, usually if it's not a black character saying it, it's a character that you could tell is like a piece of crap. Yeah. Like a, yeah. A, like yeah. in Django, it's always like the slave owner. It's like, okay, well we know we're going to hate these guys because they're using it. So I think he used it to obviously invoke emotion but there's a there's a lot of people that don't want to believe that people used to talk like that or people talk like that in general. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, good point. That's like in um, yeah, but uh, Tarantino has a special way it, of writing dialogue that you wouldn't think would be really interesting, but it's uh, completely captivating, and interesting. Like Royale with cheese. I don't know <laughs> what you know. What I'm saying or the foot massage in, in Paul Fiction. What make a motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Tickle his feet, make him want to throw, jump off a twelve-story building. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit is just interesting. I don't yeah. know how it is. It just seemed like how people talk. Even once a time in America, mm-hmm. uh, his uh, his latest film, 
I don't know. I just want to see uh, Cliff Booth in um, a Once Upon a uh, Time in Hollywood. Uh, Ryan Dunn. Yeah, yeah. Once Upon a Time in, in Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. I just want to see them hang out, bro. I just want to see Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio hang out in Hollywood and he, uh, let his dog eat dog food and just talk and shit. I don't know what makes it so captivating. And then with Django, oh, it was probably more and worse than that. So. <laughs> I mean that was, this this was the 1800s like this is yeah. hundreds of years or over 100 years ago obviously so um deep, deep, deep south yeah <laughs> like what I, I think when you have a when you have an actual account of history how much people had hate in their heart back then to add dialogue yeah. to me to me like, like that does not seem unrealistic yeah like, I don't, what's I don't, that doing on that <laughs> stand <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> By the way, oh, Sam Jackson actually uh, really was like he turned that character out, man. He could have he could have really been. I, I think Quinn had even initially said that he did not want. He was like embarrassed to say like, "Hey, can you play this part?" Because it was such like a. It's like probably like the one of the most disrespectful parts you can play. <laughs> oh, the, this is the biggest Uncle Tom in the history. Yes, uh, we can say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but he, and, it was great. great. Sam Jackson's like, no, man. After I read the script, I'm gonna, I'm gonna own this character. Like I really did <laughs> yeah. like the he writing did, for this did. character, and, and and it was one of those characters that even though he didn't have a lot of screen time, he stood out. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! It was a great character. I mean, people like that existed all the time. It's a name for it for for a reason. Just yeah. because you like we're so woke nowadays, don't mean we don't have to show the the characteristics of of, of that person. You know what I'm saying? Samuel L. Jackson was great in that role. You know what I'm saying? I would yeah. rather watch. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Samuel L. Jackson any day than I watch Will Smith in Emancipation, which which he was terrible, by the way. I, I would just go say that. It has nothing to do with the Oscars. He was just terrible with that movie. Like what, I have what? not seen that yet. Yeah, the tra don't the watch it. Really? The trailer looked really <laughs> yeah. like captivating. Like it was going to be like yeah. an Oscar bait movie. Yeah, Will Smith messes up the movie. It's not the director or even the writing. It's just, it's just Will Smith. Oh, he's just wow. bad. And it got nothing to do with what happened at the Oscars or whatever. He's just bad, bro. He's just bad. Like, he ruined the movie. Like, I don't believe a word you're saying. Oh, but yeah. Samuel Jackson, <laughs> I believe everywhere he said, you gonna let he wasn't even doing no last nice stag. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I believe that shit, you know? And that's funny you say Will Smith, because going yeah. full circle with Django, Will Smith was initially... Uh, pitch that play. that supposed mm -hmm. to play uh, uh, Jamie Foxx's uh, role, which I am once again glad that he didn't play um, because I, I was so like uh, uh, at first when I heard Jamie Foxx, I'm like, oh man, he's such a clean cut guy, dude. Like he has the sharpest hairline. Like how is he gonna play a slave? Like you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, everybody had to look of that time period. Also, mm -hmm. I can really appreciate a time period when they make the teeth look all grimy when they make the the dirt all over the face and stuff like that because that's mm -hmm. what the times were back then nobody was, was showering daily like uh, you were lucky if you took a damn sh uh, bath or whatever you know what i'm saying like uh, right. so <laughs> right. so anytime like they have yeah anytime they have time period movies and people come out with the pearliest white straight teeth i'm like what the fuck mm -hmm. is this? were they in the green room <laughs> back in the western days like what's happening <laughs> uh, yeah yeah a absolutely it's Ab crazy absolutely. it's crazy yeah, but yeah. but Going back to this, uh, going back to this, um, yeah, our, our characters, the Gecko Brothers, were introduced to the madness uh, that is their killing spree. So we find out they're on the run. They even give us a deep dive on kind of play by play of what happened. And, and this is not verbatim, but I want to say that uh, Richie had escaped first and then he busted out his brother. Yeah. Were they at the same prison? Because. I would have to assume so that 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 they were at the same prison. I don't think he busted out of one prison and then somehow did another prison escape. But I think they were in the same prison um, mm -hmm. for the bank heist. But you would think they want to separate them. But that's kind of yeah. what it, what it was. And uh, they were on the run. They talked about there had been multiple body counts. I want to say like four cops they had already killed. They showed some random uh, uh, woman that they said that they ran over, which I also forgot. They did a good job of making a like a like an actual new like a breaking news brief. And it's like you didn't have to show that, but it was effective because it's like these guys are killers. Right. Right. You know Absolutely. They, yeah, they build up a whole history of these guys that yeah. you know the danger of, but by just only showing one scene of their. Um, 
mayhem. We only needed to see that first, you know what I'm saying, uh, store robbery to really know the dangers of him. And then, you know what I'm saying, get him in the car and show, like, yeah, the flashbacks of how dangerous these two characters really were. And then, like, I really thought they were the dangerous, but they were highly likable. George yeah. Clooney had the coolest uh, neck t- tattoo I ever seen. So. <laughs> So cool, right? It goes all the way up his neck and then down his uh his whole arm. I think it was like it was crazy because at the end he takes yeah. off his shirt and you can see it. I'm like, that is a it, it's almost like a tribal tattoo, but it's not. But it looked mm-hmm. badass though. And and once again, oh, don't. yeah, jumping to George Clooney, man. Have you ever seen a Clooney character like this in your life? <laughs> no, no. I wonder. He wasn't if- like this on Golden Girls. No, <laughs> I've seen that a clip of that too, by the way. Uh, but but uh, a, a part of trivia that I did read uh, was that he was fresh off of ER. I didn't even know he was on ER, but he was in that TV show Ooh. ER. So he was like a hot commodity in the early 90s. And yeah. for him to go, there's a joke that uh, was in the trivia that Quinn told him. He goes, he goes, man, you went from saving bodies in the ER to just dropping bodies in the <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I guess he was. I'm thinking he had did Batman and Robin uh, before this, but no, this yeah, was that was after. after. That yeah, was yeah, after. Yeah yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he was hot, man. I mean, you know, he's on a hot streak. Uh, definitely, he. I, I mean, even as a killer, I mean, he still had a, a clean look, but not really. Like he seemed, he seemed like he didn't want to fuck with them. I think it was. Mm-hmm. More of the way he delivered his dialogue, where I was like, "Man, he's he's quick with it. Like he's quick with the with the words." Mm-hmm. And he was definitely, mm-hmm. you know, pulling that gun out really fast. He was using it whenever he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really thought he got into this character. And every other George Clooney movie that I've seen around that time was mm-hmm. completely different. And that's how I know that he's a great actor. When you can literally do a one eighty into your next mm-hmm. film. Or or three sixty, I guess three sixty, uh, into a whole different character for the next film, and you don't even remember, you know, man, uh, you you think like this is the same guy, like that's mm-hmm. that's a mark of true act of a true actor, I think. Mm-hmm. His words were very direct. Like when he yeah. when he spoke, you know what I'm saying? He was, you know what I'm saying? He was calm like a Han Solo and cool, but like when it, when he said something, he he meant it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no yeah. fucking around with his character. You know what I'm saying? It, oh, it, he wasn't was fucking around at all. Yeah. No, 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 no. And that go, like, and that, like, go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no, no. I was just gonna say like I was the same thing. Like yeah, like like when he was messing with his brother or or anything. Like when he was telling the people what to do, he was just like, "You have to do this, or I'm gonna, you know, I'm saying I'm gonna kill you. I'll shoot you in the face. You know, what I'm saying things like things yeah. like that." I just thought he pulled that off excellently to be like one of his first. Uh, major motion picture roles. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you know, without spending so much time on the opening scene, um, you know, Quinn uh, ends up blasting our main store guy. And he's like, you know, he mouthed the words help us, which he did not. I I, I always thought that when, when, you know, maybe he did. But then, you know, once it came out on, you know, physical media, I rewound it last night and he didn't. <laughs> Sing of the Ranger. I did it. You gotta believe me, I did it! He mouthed the words, help us. You fucking liar! I didn't say shit! shut the hell up! The, the the whole point that they got a, across from with that, and then of course the lady that they do take hostage later on, is that Quinn is a pure psychopath in this movie, and he will lie to his brother to justify the killing. And I actually really thought that was probably the scariest part of his character, is that he was such a not even a manipulator. He was a, what do they call it? I guess sociopath when you believe your own lies, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, yeah. So he was a sociopath, psychopath uh, because he enjoyed the killing. He didn't He didn't feel any remorse whatsoever. He didn't uh, uh, mind it. He knew that, that was kind of like, he didn't use his words. He just automatically wanted to go to killing uh, where his brother is like, look, we have a plan. We have a plan of action. We're going to meet this guy in Mexico. We're going to chill. We're going to lay low. We're going to find a, a you know sanctuary. We're going to ha- we have money down there and this is it. And <laughs> Richie was not following the plan, man. He was like a cor- uh, uh, a wrench in the in the plan, dude. And and the mm-hmm. whole machine and he was really fucking it up for his brother. So what ends up happening to him ultimately is not, you know, a surprise, but it's it's just a really troubling uh um you know, character that we get from this guy because, you know, uh, jumping ahead to, to when they have a hostage, you know, uh, it, this, it's pretty, it's, it's like some Dahmer shit, dude. I mean, you know, he ends up, uh, uh, raping a hostage and she did nothing. She did fucking nothing. When I, when, when I rewatched that scene a couple nights ago, I was like, 
they showed this in the big screen. I feel like the the audience would be like, "What movie am I getting into?" Once again, I thought the, <laughs> like I thought this was a vampire movie, like you yeah, said, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was that older lady too, right? In the yeah, hotel. Yeah, she was supposed. Yeah. yeah, she was a bank teller. I think they had said that they had taken yeah. hostage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't even film that today. I think they they flip out. It'd be. A l- I feel like it's a little bit too rough, man. Of of once again, but it was during that natural born killer era where, yeah, you couldn't. I don't think you could do natural born killers nowadays. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, <laughs> it will flip out. They trying to uh, cancel a Reefa Franklin song from Natural Woman. You know, what I'm saying the transgender says like that's not true. There's <laughs> no natural that's woman. Wild. Yeah, that is but wild, I think man. they said they were just they were just playing. You know, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, come on, that's song is old. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> It, it, it was a different time about 20 years ago or so, man, for this. And, and uh, definitely they were they were saying a lot of dialogue that I don't think you can get away with nowadays, which is unfortunate yeah. because, like I said, uh, there are I, I definitely felt like these characters could be real, like in real life somewhere mm-hmm. yeah. out there. And I definitely felt that they were trying to get from point A to point B. And, mm-hmm. and the brothers were they really seemed like real brothers because there was there was that moment where it's like. You know, uh, uh, when they find, um, you know, a little, uh, you know, a roof over their head for the night in that place. By the way, mm-hmm. did you notice when when uh, Clooney got burgers, it was the Big Kahuna burgers? The Big Kahuna burgers. Yeah, I yeah. always remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a dope Easter egg. Even back in the day, I noticed that. Like, oh, so yeah, quick. the Big Kahuna burgers, son. They, they show it so quick, too. Like, when he gets out of the car, he has the, the, the bag or whatever. And that's when he discovers, man, he goes... He goes, where's the, uh, he gives him the burger, you know, and then uh, at this point he had gotten shot through the hand, uh, Richie, so he's over there bleeding, and he's like, uh, here man, eat this, you know, and then he's like, hey, where's, uh, where's, the, where's the lady? And he goes, who? And he goes, the fucking lady, the, the hostage. And he goes, oh, he's, she's in there. The, the way he, the way he replies, it's just like, it ain't nothing, like it's nothing. Like this is not a big deal. And uh, she opens the door, uh, he opens the door, and this was a such an effective shot because they did not initially show the body. I don't know if you remember, they just show George Clooney's expression of him looking at a dead body. And then they show like a half a second frame of blood and then a half a second frame of like, kind of like her leg, like on the bed and, and then just like blood splattered on the walls. And it's not until after when George Clooney turns around and the camera is facing him, uh, his back or whatever, you could see the woman in the back and she was naked and he had put the pillow over her face because he had shot her. So it's like, you know, that's when George Clooney's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is not what we're doing. Like, this is not how it's supposed to go. What is wrong with you? And he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, you know, you, you don't just rape people. Like, this is not normal shit. And mm-hmm. he even like like he hugs him afterwards like like you know like things everything's gonna be okay and it's it's kind of, it's really it, it's sick and it's sad because it's like I don't know he, you know he can't change him but that's just still his brother right 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 yeah what a what a wild <clears throat> yeah. characters man that we got yeah yeah yeah, yeah that uh, that's so effect that's so dark bro mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying <laughs> that's so damn darky like uh, uh, just like 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 you said it's like it's it's like nothing you know to him yeah. you know like he's a psychopath sociopathic murderer yeah and what are you gonna do you know Clooney's about business yo I want to get here to there you know what I'm saying so we can just chill we don't have to worry about it yeah. but. On, on the way, like you said, you know, um, his brother is is doing everything in his power, not trying to mess it up. It's just who he is. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, you know, he still got to save it. And, you know, what I'm saying? it's ultimately sad. And then that's really dark to put in a, a, a film even back then. Um, yeah. But 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 it's effective, too. And we and this is the first half of the not even that first half of the movie. This is the first act of the movie. <laughs> yeah, this is it's literally like the first twenty minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're introduced yeah. to our characters because this is when um, it, you know what I'm saying they're painting this canvas of these two characters that are so good. It doesn't need anything else. We could just watch the whole movie with them, and it still probably would be considered a classic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, these were two characters that I definitely wouldn't mind uh, uh, seeing, and I think that's what a lot of people. Uh, like over the years, I think it, it built that cult following because Robert Rodriguez initially made this into a TV show. I don't know if you remember a couple years back um, on the El Rey Network, uh, which had a couple of seasons. I did not watch it. Did you ever you ever heard of that or no? No, 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 no. I yeah, didn't hear they made it from Dust Till Dawn um, series on because, uh, you know, Robert Rodriguez had it. I don't know if he still has it, but uh, he used to have a, a channel called El Rey uh, Network. Yeah, I and think so. 
Yeah, and uh, and that was that was like one of their original shows, and I want to say it did a couple of seasons, and I, I I could be wrong, but I think so. So this is pretty much the the, the movie just kind of you know stretched out, obviously between a couple of seasons, but mm-hmm. the characters that play Richie and um and his brother uh, mm-hmm. Seth. Uh, they're a lot younger, so I don't know if they're trying to do like what angle they're trying to do because it's all the same events. I, I, I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. it's not. A, it's not a prequel, but they're definitely looking the same and dressed the same. It's just that they're played by younger actors, like mm-hmm. like actors that are ten years younger than them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, well, I have to check that one out afterwards or something, and, and watch an episode or something like that. But I remember they used to really push that one uh, when it came out a couple years back. Like it was like maybe like 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah, Something I kind of that. think I remember hearing hearing about that. I don't think I ever checked it out. I might have checked out a couple of episodes, but it was so many Dust and Dawn sequels and sequels. And sequels. Oh God, we're not going to talk about that, man. <laughs> I mean, unless uh, uh, unless they, I might have to read up on them because I did see that they were. Uh, weren't they all starring the guy who played Terminator? Uh, Pat, Robert Patrick. Roger. Uh, yeah, Robert. Pat- <laughs> yeah, Robert Patrick. Yeah, yeah. I remember one of them being okay. Was it Dust and Dawn? Two or three that was kind of yeah. good. One of them was kinda good. But I got lost in the sauce, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I did look it up on IMDb because, uh, you know, you type in from dusk and then all the sequels pop up, right? <laughs> I, I, I clicked on the second one and they got Danny Trejo. This motherfucker died in this one. How the fuck did he come back, bro? What is happening? I'm like, uh, this is so weird. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I hate yeah. when they do that yeah. shit, but but let's get back on track. So, you know, uh, um, you know, at this time, we're introduced to uh, uh, Jacob, uh, Kate, and Scott, uh, our, our little family bunch. And, and, and we're introduced to another, you know, sad dynamic. Our sad uh, realization is that, you know, the mom had died. And uh, Jacob was initially like mm-hmm. a... Um, a pastor, right? Or, or a preacher. And, um, he was really deep into his faith. And I guess, uh, you know, after his, and this is what I love about this movie. They, they, they give you so much exposition and, and deep character dive for a fucking mm-hmm. vampire movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, yeah. They build those characters, bro. They, they give yeah. them rich, you know, uh, back history to really make you care about them. Like the mom died. He's yeah. a preacher. Like, so you already um, get this sense of empathy that you already, you already into it for these characters. Then now, now you got this other dynamic mixed with this dynamic. Yeah. And you're going to sprinkle vampires in there. Let's go. Yeah. So he, he's, <laughs> Jacob is, is battling, you know, Harvey Keitel is battling with his, his uh, lack of faith because, you know, he no longer has it because ultimately, you know, in a nutshell, he believes, you know, um, how could, you know, God take away a woman, you know, so sweet as, uh, you know, the wife of his kids and stuff like that. And that's kind of mm-hmm. uh, what it breaks down to. And they have a, you know, interesting little conversation, him and uh, uh, Juliet Lewis, Kate, his daughter at the, at the table, which I thought was, you know, good and stuff like that. And, and um, you know, it, it, the interaction uh, between them was, was very authentic. Mm-hmm. And um, I still would have liked to know a little bit more about Scott because he's just kind of thrown in the mix and you're just like, oh, okay, he's an adopted kid. Um I mean, uh, once again, that's just me like wanting to dive deeper into these characters. I know, you know, you, you don't have, have a two and a half hour movie here. We only take like an hour 40 or something like that or hour 45. But, um, you know, I was very intrigued by by a lot of these characters. And, and then they're ultimately, uh, you know, kidnapped and, and forced to drive across the border uh, because I guess their vehicle is now, uh, uh, you know, they made the make and model and stuff like that. So they're on the run. The Gecko Brothers are on the run, by the way, awesome last name, Gecko. It's like, damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gecko. Yeah. What a band of outlaws, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a cold name. Yeah. That yeah. is a cold one, man. That yeah. one in the tattoo. <laughs> Gecko Living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They the they they characters within themselves. Like I'm saying you can just have a movie with them. I'm fine. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Within this family going across the border. Yo, that's yeah. tense. That's a good Netflix Friday night. <laughs> right. Yeah. So so they make it to the border uh in this huge R V. And uh, we're introduced by, uh, I'm just going to say Cheech number one, because we got three Cheeches in this movie. So Cheech number one, uh, who plays a, a border patrol, um, uh, which is funny because they give him a little accent in this. He's, he's like, uh, what's your reason for going to Mexico? <laughs> he kind of had a little Texas accent. Oh, that was hella funny. Because, uh, yeah, I grew up on yeah, I grew up on his, uh, uh, obviously, the Cheech and Chong movies. And, and I saw him in, like, later projects here and there and stuff like that. Uh, I think him and Chong even actually reunited to do, like, some, uh, like, touring. They went on tour or something. These, oh, wow. these, these guys yeah, are old, bro. I, I heard about yeah, 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 yeah. They are old, old. They, they, they look old. 70s, right? 
Uh, yeah, late. Yeah, it has to be early seventies. I want to say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Still, still smoking. I think. I want to say. Still At least Chong yeah, is. Yeah. Chong is definitely still smoking. Oh, he gets uh, paid too. All that, that those raw papers and stuff. Yeah, like you oh, know, he got paid, bro. Bro, you have to imagine when you play characters like this and back in the day, seventies and eighties, uh, people just got to be coming up to you with joints and drugs and shit, and just like, hey man, oh, let's yeah, let's party. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Like, yeah. Uh, how much of an honor that you say you smoke with Chong or whatever? You know, like, yeah, you yeah. pass a blunt to Chong real quick on a Friday night. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Cheech, it Cheech is the border uh, patrol here, and um, and he he almost man, he almost catches them. Uh, this is where going back to you know talking about how much uh, uh, Richie uh, fucks up. They have like a little spat like in the in the in the restroom, man. And they're, they, uh, I think so, I think uh, uh, Seth calls him. He goes, he goes, man, you got to stop acting like a fucking psycho. He goes, he goes, we'll be all good if you stop acting like a fucking psycho. And then that, mm-hmm. that, that's when uh, uh, Richie uh, flips, man. He goes, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And he goes, he said I'm a fucking psycho. And he goes, no, I said you stop acting like a fucking psycho. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. That means you're implying that I am a psycho. And then they're going back and forth. So they're good. arguing while the border patrols like. Like two right feet there. outside of the freaking uh, other side of the uh, RV, with the dog and everything, right? Oh yeah, yeah. dogs and everything, yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, and, and Harvey Keitel shitting bricks. Like, how the fuck am I gonna get out of this one? Because you can hear <laughs> you can hear a thud in the bathroom, and he goes, "Oh yeah, it's, that's that's my daughter." He goes, "Oh, I thought uh, the, you said it was only two of you." <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah, and it's like Those border it, patrol don't play, dude. Oh fuck no! They'll if they if they get a whiff of anything that they think is you know uh, uh you know a red flag, they're gonna uh, break your whole car down, man, until they find something. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, luckily they make it across the border. Um, and we're on our way to the Titty Twister, man. Probably one of the coolest and insanely named and looking bars, yeah, I've ever seen. Like, have you ever seen a neon sign with a little titty? With being, titties on it? No. With titties, then it's being squeezed too. It's like a hand going like this, bro. Like little two yeah, fingers going like that. Squeeze the titties. You know, the, big ass titties on the side too. Like they just squeeze it. Like no, you don't. You don't see that in real life. But yeah. like out there, I could believe it. I could believe it. You know, out in the middle of the desert, nowhere, they yeah. do whatever they want. Literally in the middle of nowhere. But it it made it seem like that this place was not that far from the border because it almost se- seemed like they get there like in like a few miles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, like yeah you gonna you gonna chill this close to the border like i feel like the, uh, they can still kind of get you if you're i don't know but yeah, they're in on it <laughs> yeah so so we're introduced to the titty twister and that's where we get our iconic uh name tagline it says uh titty twister open from dusk till dawn i like the way that they implemented mm-hmm. uh that in there um and then we, uh, I want to say this is where we hear our, oh, no, no, I already, I already totally, um, it was at the opening credits where they get that cool song, the, it's a dark night, down, 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 down. By the way, this is one of the coolest soundtracks I've ever, I've, yeah. I've heard in a long time. And you could definitely tell Fire. that, yeah, you could definitely tell that Quinn had a hand in this because, I mean, we know Quinn's movies are usually packed with a lot of fire soundtrack. Uh, mm-hmm. Kill Bill, he had the help with RZA, c- creating like an iconic soundtrack, I thought, for part one and part two. Um, oh, Max. he's great when it comes to music, and I know we know that he's. I don't know if he ever talks about his like uh, musical, not musical background, but the reason why he knows so much about music because we know that he came from working at a movie uh, store, video like a video, store, rental, yeah, video store, yeah. And that's kind of what that was his crash course into like film school. That's like his, that was like his film school, right? That's amazing. Yeah, so that's how he gained all his knowledge and just recommending uh, other movies to people is just watching movies there in, in the movie theater. I mean, the uh, the, the video rental store. Uh, but I don't know if he ever talks about his musical upbringing or whatever because he seems to have a lot of knowledge on all kinds of music. It's right. ev- it's yeah. evident in his soundtracks, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like from old school to hip-hop to anything yeah. in between. Yeah, yeah, yes. He, he definitely does. He definitely does. Yeah. Wild stuff, man. But uh, so we're in the introduced to uh, a titty twister, which is the thuggest, like ruggedest, like crazy off the wall biker bar and oh, biker and trucker bar. I must say, uh, mm-hmm. I, I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they did a really good job of just like there's flames coming out of the side of this building and shit, and like yeah. <laughs> what, it, what, what? Like this is awesome. Like it, it really yeah. makes it, it makes, it makes it seem like 
you kind of want to go there, but you also don't oh, because don't. you don't want to get your ass beat. But you got to experience it once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just once. You got to go in there once. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, you'll definitely get into a bar fight for sure going oh, yeah. in there. But like, oh, I got, yeah. I got to, I got to go in here and get at least one beer though. You know, for, uh, just to say, <laughs> I, I got to see what's up. It's like, hey, you guys got a, a, a titty twister, a sticker I could take home and just say I was here. <laughs> a magnet. A magnet. <laughs> I was here. All right, yeah, I'm yeah. gone. I had this beer. I'm gone now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Oops. but yeah, man. So uh, this is 15. I'm out. Right. <laughs> yeah. So now we're introduced to Cheech number two character, which is. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what would you call this guy? The doorman? I don't know. He's over there on the microphone yelling yeah. about pussy. <laughs> Do you remember this? I know. Yes, you, yes, I know yes. you. I know you yeah, said you we, didn't rewatch yeah. it. Yeah, you didn't rewatch no, it. I but, know that part. No, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. We Bro. got. Yeah, yeah. You, you know the lies probably better than we got. Oh yeah. Ages. Yeah. I won't say it all. It's pretty explicit, but it goes back yeah, to yeah. like once again uh, a, a a scene that you could not write nowadays. No. And it, it it feels totally nineties, but he's basically listing off all the different kinds of, of pussy that you can get <laughs> at oh, this yeah. yeah, at this yeah, place. Yeah. And it goes on for like three or four minutes. And uh it, it, it he, Eskimo? You can get Eskimo. No, he right? says uh, uh yeah, he did, he definitely starts naming off the, the different kind and then he starts going off on he goes, We got dog pussy, cat pussy, right? <laughs> I'm like, what the f- <laughs> Looking at that place, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be uh, surprised in the back if they got some wild bestiality shit going on. Yeah, oh, me too. It was, a, it was a snake. It was definitely a snake in here. Yeah, he just starts naming oh, yeah. off all this wild shit. And uh, he's a character, man. Uh, you know, and, and obviously in all these Cheech get-ups, he, he does look different. But uh, you can not you can recognize that voice, man. You're just like, this is mm-hmm. Cheech straight up. I, I have a feeling like all that shit was improv, dude. It was not even <laughs> written down. I mean, it probably yeah. was written down. He's like, Quinn was probably like, hey, man, can you just talk about pussy? And he's like, I got it, man. I'm a guy. I got you a I scene right it. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, they just got it. Yeah, there's no way that was written down. That's just all. That's all him there. I think and so, And it was man. amazing, too. Like, damn. <laughs> it, was, it was wild shit. So oh, once again, another another intro into how rough this bar could be. So we're in the bar now. And uh, yeah, now we're just waiting. We're waiting until, until uh, dawn, right? Uh, because that's when our third Cheech, we find out, is going to meet up with him who is, yeah, just someone, I guess, who is, uh, was he holding the money for him or something? I totally forgot because at the end of the show, it was like a, a briefcase of money. I think he had his money and then he was going to provide sanctuary for a fee or something like that. Basically, like, hey, I'm going to get you like, uh, you know, I'm going to get you situated out here and, um, you know, you'll be good. You'll be good, basically. Like, you're going to start over. You, obviously, I mean, you're on the run. You're going to have to get a new passport. You're going to have to get all this stuff, right? So I think he was just a shady dude that he was waiting for. And, um, you know, we're introduced to this bar where right away you walk in and there's people, like, punching each other left and right. Also, <laughs> the, uh, they show the bar who the bartender is a... a I, I know it's hard to say the words young Danny Trejo, but because every time we see Danny Trejo, he's always looking old as shit. Always. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But this one, I will say he is younger because I think half his life he did a stint in, 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 in prison. Yeah. Prison. Yeah. He was in prison. So yeah, yeah, yeah. by the time he got out, he was already old. Like he was already mm-hmm. older. Um, I would say 40s, mid 40s. Right. Yeah. He uh, he definitely did like 20 to 25 years, something like that. Damn. Uh, uh, de- uh, I don't know for what I, I forgot, but I, I definitely saw glimpses of his story, like in different podcasts and whatnot. But anyways, uh, young Danny Trejo, he's a bartender and. Oh. It is gross, dude. I don't remember this. I don't know if you remember this, but there is like a glass encasement and it says something about we got fresh tacos or something like that or fresh food. And there's a fucking pig head in there that looks like disgusting, bro. <laughs> it looks like the meat is rotting there. I'm like, I would not eat a taco from that place. Uh, Are you kidding me? Shit. Oh, t- no, I didn't see that. <laughs> Ima- imagine. Yeah, I had a taco from the titty twister. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah. Oh, man. It, man, that's man. that's wild shit, but but um yeah man we're introduced to him. They sit down, have their beers. Seth is already Seth is on edge, man. And and, and uh, uh Harvey Keitel tells him, man, uh, what's his name, Jacob or his, yeah Jacob Fuller. He tells him, he goes, hey man, 
uh, you need to chill the fuck out because Seth is over there drinking like a madman. Remember that? He's taking yeah, shots. He goes, I want everybody to take shots with me. Everybody. He goes, he goes, Scott, you gonna take a you shot? Kid? Yeah, he goes, hey, you only 13 years old? I don't give a shit. Just take a shot with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Kate, you're gonna take a shot? Kate's over there has three shots with him. I'm like, damn. And, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then uh, Jacob has to, has to shake him loose, man, and, and say, hey, man, uh, you know, we ease up, man. He goes, he goes, are you such a fucking, I remember he says, he goes, are you such a fucking loser? You can't recognize when you, when you've won. And Seth like looks yes. at him like this and he goes, I love that line. Yeah. yeah. He goes, he goes, what'd you say to me? Like, I thought, they were gonna, I thought he was going to scrap for a second. And he's mm-hmm. like, he goes, you don't realize that you've won. He goes, the Ameri- no one in America could find you. You've made it chill out basically. And I thought that was mm-hmm. cool that he kind of put, he kind of checked him. Mm-hmm. Because he knew that if he had more drinks in him and he was already angry, that he mm-hmm. was going to start a fight, they would get kicked out, and that would fuck up his chances with, you know, obviously Jacob and his family escaping. Yes. Yeah. Yep, because they're yep, still yep, hostages yep. at this point. They're being they're being yep. held hostage. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That would have made it hot. That would have made the scene hot. You know what I'm saying? That would have made exactly. the block hot. Exactly. Yeah. If, if he got more drunk and started flipping out, so he had mm-hmm. to check him. I thought that was a thought that was a smart move by Jacob there, Harvey Cartel, and he said it. Yeah. He, he meant it. He said it with his chest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He said and it then, with his chest. And, and I think Seth recognized that because he goes, you know what, Jacob, have a drink with me, man. And he goes, all right, I'm gonna have a drink with you. And then they chill out for a bit. Um, and then that's when we get our Salma Hayek scene, man. Santanico pandemonium, which yes, is yes. a satanic pandemonium. And oh uh, I got the trivia for this. I'll just read it along the way. Um, let me see if I can find this one, man, because this one was a pretty cool uh, callback. Tanico, here we go. So originally, Satanico Pandemonium was called Blonde Death. Quentin Tarantino decided to go for a Latino slash Mexican star, so he used Salma Hayek after seeing her in Desperado in 1995. The name Satanico Pandemonium came from the title of a gory Mexican horror movie, Satanic, Satanico Pandemonium from 1975, that Quentin Tarantino had seen on the shelf of the video store which he worked. Mm, I might want to check that out. Gangster. Yeah, that's gangster. Yeah, so because it's an awesome name. Yeah, because I clicked it and it it's it's like nuns, like it's like a like a nun horror movie, like so some possession shit that happens in the in the church. I'm like, I might want to check this out. I like a, a decade that I really haven't dove too much into for horror is the '70s, and I really want to watch more. Like, I, yeah, I've seen Texas Chainsaw and uh, the night that that dreaded sundown, which I believe was also mid '70s, something like that. That was before mm-hmm. Friday the Thirteenth, and of course Friday the Thirteenth was what seventy eight nine eight. 78? Yeah, 78, 79, or maybe 80. Huh? Yeah, and then if maybe yeah. I'm not sure. And then okay, maybe I'm, I'm maybe wrong. Or 79 or 80, I could be off. And then of course, like Dawn of the Dead, and then Halloween came out towards the end of the 70s, right? So I've seen the big ones, but I really haven't seen some of the deeper cuts, and I really want to, um, you know, kind of get back into that because I, I feel like I've just been stuck in the 80s, man, when it comes to horror movies. 80s, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I grew up in the 80s too, so I got a lot of. But it is some good ones in, in the 70s, though, like some low key, terrifying oh, yeah. ones. Yeah, Changeling, shit. Like what was that. it called? The Changeling. Yeah, yeah. With George C. Scott, shit is crazy. <laughs> Not seen that, but I think I've heard the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's weird. It's, it's a bunch of them. Um, yeah, yeah. We can go out, man. Okay, okay. So Salma Hayek. Satanical pandemonium, and we're introduced oh uh, to her, man. And uh, do you remember the first time you saw this? Because yeah. I, I, as a child, <laughs> I probably was just amazed as I was watching this. Now yeah. she is—I'll yeah. say it at the bat before getting you know too gaga. She is a gorgeous woman. She still looks gorgeous mm-hmm. at her age. Mm-hmm. Um, this is something that we usually see uh, pretty common. And now that mm-hmm. I, well, this is, wasn't. Julia Lewis for uh first movie obviously but like for Salma it's it's one of her first couple of uh American movies I, th- I think I looked at her at her at her IMDb and I think she had some Mexican movies that she did but um it, a lot of uh female actresses get their start in horror you know in the horror game yeah Jennifer yeah. Aniston was in Leprechaun Jennifer Aniston yeah so I mean you have a lot that are getting their start even nowadays you know with some of the newer reboots and like the screams I could definitely see like out of the last scream uh, some of them are kind of blowing up. If they already didn't do TV, like some of them are going to blow up or whatever, you know. Jennifer Ortega. Jennifer right. Ortega. Uh, Je- well, Jennifer Jen Ortega, I think was, I think she was a Disney kid. I think she did the Disney show right. circuit. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. she did all that yeah. stuff before. And then, of course, X and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, point point made, they're getting their start off of horror movies. Um, mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Uh, so I think that's cool that Salma Hayek agreed to do this. Um, yeah, right. Once again, some trivia about her snake scene. Because uh, she does come out dancing, you know, uh, uh, with a huge... Is that, I think it's a boa constrictor. I'm not a. I'm not a. Yeah, yeah. Snake guy, but... boa constrictor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember this scene, man? First seeing it, and what yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that scene. I seen it on the big screen. So, like, when that scene happened, whatever was going on in the movie, the murders, and you know, say the blowing up, whatever <laughs> fuck was happening, the shots, whatever happened to the plot, it all stopped. It all everything when she came out like that, like. Because they kind of shot it at the, you know, like you kind of looking up at it too. So like, we don't, we're not used to seeing curvy woman on screen like very that. Very She was very curvy. Time, you know, she was very, very curvy. Yeah, she was. Excellent body. I mean, I thought her body was beautiful. I thought, I, I thought she was just absolutely beauty, a uh, beautiful, and um, she was, she put me in a trance, bro. Like, I, I think she put the whole audience in a trance. It wasn't just me. I'm Did pretty sure then. everybody was just lo looking like that. I think it's one point where she put her foot in George Clooney's mouth, or was it uh, her uh, brother Quins, or whatever? Quins, right? yeah. Quins, yeah, Quins. I was like, and that leg, bro, just how it shot, it was brown. It was just perfect. You was just <laughs> like, damn, she is beautiful. I, I believe even women, uh, women think she is beautiful, bro. This is oh, like, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, like, like yeah. she was... She was a smoking hot knockout, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, you know, I'm not be, I'm not gonna be disrespectful or, or whatever, but like she she was absolutely captivating. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? In that scene. It's it's iconic. I agree. Her coming out of that stage was iconic. And the music that was playing, you just couldn't look anywhere else. You getting like, hey babe, let me get some popcorn. No, you're like, <laughs> like, I'll hold it, I'll hold it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it was just like that, man. That's that's why I remember that scene. That's like one of the that's one of the best scenes I ever seen in my life. Just that, you know, not being mm. like sexual, just how they shot her and how she was lit and how she was moving with mm -hmm. the snake. It was, it, it was sexual. Of course, she's yeah. highly sexy. Let's not get it messed up, but like it was done very well and very tasteful. She didn't have to take off her top or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing yeah, that I kind of appreciated. Like yeah. Because uh, another mm -hmm. thing I forgot to mention is once we're introduced to the titty twister bar, there is women dancing around, you know, topless and stuff like that. And when she comes out, you could definitely, oh, like she's the headliner. You know what I'm saying? So they did it a little different. They put the boa around her neck. They they didn't have her, you know, go topless or whatever. It was just more of a sensual dance, almost like a lap dance for everybody. And yeah, for the she, yeah, she have, she <laughs> she ends up walking. Uh, you know, we're, by the way, the background music is like a very like guitar, you know, a uh, ballad and stuff like that. And it, it's definitely just setting the scene of like. You know what? All of a sudden, like we went from this gritty biker bar to everyone's just kind of mesmerized for one second. And her name is yeah. Sat Satanico Pandemonium, you know, uh, Satanic Pandemonium, which she had everybody over under a trance, which is very, very clever, uh, you know, name and the casting, too. I thought it was great casting because um, mm -hmm. she didn't have that many lines in this movie. She does after this. But like, um, you know, it was more of just kind of the visual that made you just like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, this stands out as a scene that I'm going to remember for a while. You know what I'm saying? For my rest of my life. But yeah, she does end remember. up putting the foot, you know, in Quinn's mouth. Uh, and this is when I was like, oh, I forgot about the, the foot part. And then I was like, it clicked. Quinn's involved. There's going to be some feet shots. And then earlier in the movie, they show Juli uh, Juliet Lewis's feet uh, from a downward angle. I don't know if you caught that. Like, he dropped something. And he went down and he like looked at her, like he looked her body like from down and then went up, but they showed her feet. And I'm like, you know, Quinn Tarantino told the camera guy, he started her feet and go up. <laughs> he, he also, so I can get down there. Yeah. He also uh, uh, has a, has like a weird shot when they're on, remember when they're talking on the RV, like he's talking to them about, like he puts that bite, uh, that thing in his mouth, the, uh, thing yeah. to grind his, grind his teeth. He said he grinds his teeth, the bit or whatever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, he's having a little conversation with her and stuff like that. And he's like looking her up and down and they start from her toes all the way up. Same mm -hmm. thing. Just another added layer of him being a pervert because obviously she's mm -hmm. underage, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he's really like that for real in real life, you know, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I well, at least, well, at least a, a, a foot, <laughs> uh, at least a foot fetish. I don't know if he's a, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to say the, uh, a P word, but. 
No, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about like a uh, fetish, like it's foot fetish. Thing, right. You know, no, 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 that's nothing like that. That's absolutely <laughs> one hundred percent true. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think that's pretty evident. Every single movie, there's a foot shot uh, uh, from some or well, from the women. Um, yeah. So yeah, we get that amazing foot shot, and like yeah, you said, say she does something with the with her leg that like she puts her whole leg up, and then she like like licks the like liquor off her leg. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, how did they? How did she do this? Like balance on one foot and do that? I was, I was, it was, I was blown away, but blown away. Yeah, we're introduced uh, to her in that scene. This is when Cheech number two busts in and says, "Hey, George Clooney and his brother." Uh, that those are the guys that whooped my ass. I forgot to mention that you know they whooped his ass before they got in. I don't even know they did it either. He wasn't even doing anything. Yeah. Oh, I think because he said something to Kate. And they took that as disrespect, so they just whooped his ass, right? Mm-hmm. So he, yeah. he's like, "These are the guys that did it," and <laughs> and uh, and then that's when they get into a, into another fight. Uh, from there, uh, Tarantino, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, Richard Gecko, Richie, his hand is stabbed uh, from there. So he pulls out the knife and just starts stabbing the shit out of of Danny Trejo's character, right? Now, when he slams that knife back on the counter. That's when we first see that the blood is green. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yes. Juliet Lewis looks at it, and it's just dripping green. And you're like, "Oh shit! What? What are they? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? What, what is? I totally forgot about the green blood because I think along the way you see exploding bodies here and there. You don't really notice the green blood until like you see it on that knife, really. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was an interesting uh, uh, take, and there's a reasoning for that. Do you know the reasoning for the green blood? Um, or do you want to guess? I think I, I, I think I remember the reason for the green blood. Mm-hmm. Because there's a special reasoning, reasoning, and it's not it's not for any lore of the vampire. It's a different reasoning to uh, make it um, differentiate from the human blood. No, that's my guess. No. It's. It's uh, to pass through the MPAA as a rated R movie. Oh, I know. They, I did not they, know that. Yeah, they busted a Kill Bill on his ass because I don't know if you remember in Kill Bill, he had, of course, a huge scene where the crazy 88 is getting sliced and diced, right? They use like it. they use like hundreds of gallons. It was like the one of the world's record of like most gallons of blood, right? So uh, that movie didn't pass uh, almost because that scene had too much blood on screen. So what did he do? He made the, the scene black and white. <laughs> You remember that? Mm. Remember when uh, that scene turns to black and white? Yes. Yeah. That's the reason why he the did cartoon. it is because they're like, okay, we can show blood uh, black instead of r- bright red. And that's that's got him an R rating instead of uh, rated X or rated NC-17. Wow. I don't know. I didn't know that. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> same. Yeah. Same thing with this, man. Um, you know, when it came to the exploding, because there's a, there a lot of gore in this movie. If you, you really yeah. rewatch it. Um, there's a lot of like limbs being ripped off and stuff like that. So, uh, the majority of the, of the blood is coming from the, from the vampires themselves. And I don't know when I was a kid, I always thought these were demons. Like I didn't never thought they were Mm. vampires because I don't remember vampires looking like this in movies. You always see them Mm -hmm. like Fright Night style vampires, right? Yeah. Like more like, yeah, for that to work. And even when his face changed, it did look like some of the the vampires of this movie. <laughs> yeah, no, man, they look like they did like demons. Is like like North Baratu demons because they did that yeah. more thing. Like like since Sam was hot, yeah. bitch, it was like bald head, like ah, I was like whoa, what the, what the fuck is going on, son? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I think this was the I think in my mind I always tell myself that this was more than just a vampire movie. They were something else because they just look so damn. Whoever created this design, man, was great. Like, it was really a good, good design. I will say that. Um, but, yeah, so in that moment, you know, we see the green blood. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, they, got their, they got their guns drawn. The Gecko Brothers got their g- guns drawn, and they're back to back. And I love that shot. It just shows them back to back, you know, pointing the guns at everybody. And then you're just thinking, like, what the fuck are they going to do? Because at this point, it's them versus everybody at the bar. Because... The bar, mm-hmm. the bar, nobody knows them. Like, they're outsiders, right? Nobody knows them. Um, yeah. And they think everybody's out to get them because they got this fight. So the blood is dripping from uh, Richard Gecko, Quinn Tarantino's hand. And that's when we see Salma just like almost hyperventilating, like, you know? And she sees that blood dripping. And that's when she jumps on him and just bites the shit out of his neck, rips a chunk, or just, you know, bites him to the point where he's, 
ends up dying. He ends up dying. Yeah, he was dead. Yeah. yeah. And that's where we get that scene where it's like they want you where they make it seem like, you know, uh, in that moment where George Clooney's holding uh, Quentin, where he's like, he's dying. Quinn's dead. He's, you know, I mean, you know, when you get bit right there, all that blood's coming out and you only got, you know, seconds, minutes before you mm-hmm. lose all your blood. Right. Um, yeah. And I love that Quinn's dying words. I don't know if you remember were, were bitch, fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, that fucking bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are his dying yes. words. And um, uh, that's when all hell breaks loose. We find out that the reason she bit him is because she is a vampire. Satanical pandemonium. And uh, we get the transformation of literally everyone in that fucking bar that is a vampire undercover because it's not everybody. The bikers are like, what the fuck is going on too? Like some of the bikers are just like as surprised as everybody else. Right. And I thought that was cool that it was a vampire biker bar. Some of them were working there as vampires and they were just bringing in regular patrons like every night, like, Hey, and the word never got around to not go to this bar. (laughs) But yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Like the titty yeah, twister, man. You might not want to go to that, but you might not want to go in the titty twister. You know what I'm saying? Crazy ass should be happening here. What? What? You get to clap or something? Like, no, bro. You know, uh, you might get clapped. My homie, <laughs> <laughs> my homie went in there yesterday. And we 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 ain't heard from him since. You know, I think exactly. that warlock dude went in there. And we we haven't heard from. Him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, bro! Too soon, man. <laughs> Especially if they find his ass too soon. Come on, man. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> Hey, but you might want to start, guys, in Mexico. It might be the titty twister. It might be the titty twister, man. Warlock vampires, they might have a kin to each other. I don't know. Damn. <laughs> what a twist. I see a, I see a sequel in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a spin-off sequel in the future. Can we um, give a shout out to that band note? It's like, fuck you, good night. Dude, that was so wild, too, by the way. Um, so yeah, everyone's turning into vampires. And I swear to God, like 20 seconds into everybody transforming. They show the band and they're over there playing the guitar with some guy's body. I'm like, where the fuck did they get that body from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strings. It was like a, a, yeah. a full cello. By the way, <laughs> uh, a, a very cool practical effect that I don't think they could do nowadays because that shit look real, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll throw it up here on screen. By the way, I've been bad on the YouTube you know, thing by not putting up pictures. Like I said, I, I just like to get these oh, out really right. quick, but yeah, just for the audience, you know, like I'm going to start throwing up pictures and stuff like that. Um, so you guys know exactly what we're talking about and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so the bands over there playing a human body, I thought was really funny. And they, they, yeah, they all do look really crazy when it comes to the makeup. <laughs> the makeup was really good, man. What'd you think about yeah. the makeup when it, when everybody's transforming into the vampires? Yeah, I thought the, the morphing was a little off putting that forth when it, it was a straight morph. You know what I'm saying? Even back then, it was like, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Because that was like a little, yeah. that style had been a little played. You know what I'm saying? Remember Michael Jackson did it in that, that video to death? I forgot what, black or white or whatever. And then, you know, oh, they, yeah, they, were really, <laughs> yeah. they were really using that morph. So, but the actual practical makeup I thought was uh, fantastic. That's, yeah, Greg Nicotero and over the KB special effects, they were. Yeah, that shit was cold, bro. They look evil and scary and menacing. And, like, yeah, the sign with the band, it was just blood everywhere. Yeah, heck, yeah. yeah. The, the makeup, um, I give it A+. Plus. Yeah. It's just mayhem, yeah. man. It, it's just mayhem when everybody starts turning because, once again, you have some bikers that are not in on it. Uh, we get our introduction to the bikers that start fighting back, which are uh, Tom Savini, Fred Williamson. Um trying to think of any other ones that I might have seen uh, in there that were recognizable names. I don't think so. Um oh, yeah. But yeah, they're uh, they're they're like tag teaming. Oh, by the way, Tom Savini is sex machine, and he has a dick gun. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, how cra- I heard he came up with it. <laughs> oh yeah, he definitely would. Yeah. He definitely would yeah, yeah, uh, come yeah. up with some shit. Uh-huh. By the way, I thought it was so funny that there was two barrels on the side that looked like his nuts. Yeah, his nuts, but they were actually the revolver. Like when you put the bullets in or whatever. Yeah, yeah. so he can hold twelve shots, crazy. huh? <laughs> so crazy like bro when he when he whipped that thing out and it even looked funnier when it went back in yeah (laughs) they just played that that shot in reverse obviously you could tell Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i I thought that was so funny he just like steals some guy's beer with a whip by the way he thinks he's indiana jones sex machine yeah Right. Yeah, that's a, that's the a dream role, probably. Tom Savini, you always want to play a character like that. <laughs> right. He just steals some guy's yeah. beer. The guy pulls out a knife and he pulls out his dick gun. I thought it was hilarious, <laughs> dude. 
uh, which he only uses like once in the movie, by the way. So I was like, wow, what an elaborate contraption just to use once. I think somebody like a vampire jumps on him and he just like it pulls out and shoots him, right? <laughs> I thought that was like, okay. Well, that was uh, yeah. kind of lackluster, yeah. but it was a yeah. lackluster, you know, pre- yeah. premature, uh, you know, premature, premature. ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got, he a premature uh, that sex machine yeah, there. Pre- yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and then also, uh, what do you think about Fred Williamson, man? I mean, I don't know much of his. You know much of his work in the black exploitation days? Did not he, really, not what, really. Was he know? in? Was he in a, a, a original Gangsters? Remember that movie? Uh, I think it came, so. he came was on the in the 90s? Yeah, yeah, it had all the black exploitation people. Him, yeah, Fred Williamson, was oh. Isaac Hayes was in it, right? Damn, he's in a movie called Boss N-Word from the 70s? <laughs> no, it's literally called Boss and it has the N-Word like, on a big poster. Oh, dude, I don't know. What I never heard of that fuck? one. Yeah, in, I know uh, 1974. <laughs> yeah, they, they released that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, real big on the poster, bro. It has the N word. <laughs> Interesting. He did 133 uh, movies, though. Um, so that's wild. That's yeah. wild shit, dude. Uh, so give it up to him. Uh, he's still around, you know, or, or I don't. I don't even know. I don't know. He well, it says I don't know. Yeah, it says 2022 was his last project, so he might. He I'm might trying be to, around. Yeah, I'm trying to go back in his early catalog to see. Um, I know he's in. I'm movies. gonna get you, sucker. Oh, I remember part. He was in Original Gangsters as John Bookman. Oh, that's... Dude, Original Gangsters came out the same year, 1996. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember that being a really good movie. Uh, well, like, at least as far as, like, a, a... I thought it was a pretty... Inter- from what I remember, I saw it way back in the day, too. Do you remember that one? A little bit. I know it had all the black exploitation guys. Like Pam Greer and... Oh, yeah, I did Pam, yeah, Pam Jim Pam Brown. Green. Jim Brown. Jim Brown, yeah. And I think it was, oh my God, this trailer they're showing on IMDb. I got to put it up. It is like a, a, not even a full screen trailer. It's like a, 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 a not a full screen. It is a, it is a full screen with the four by three aspect ratio. Oh, damn. It looks old school, bro. It's basically the old heads going at like a new young gang. Yeah, that's why yeah, it's called. Yeah. That's why it's called the original gangsters. <laughs> original gangsters. Yeah, I think my dad wanted to go see that. Uh, he, he wanted to go see it. He He's like, come on, it. son. I'm one of the, I'm one of the OGs. I'm one of the OGs. They didn't put me in a movie because my shit was too real. <laughs> too real. That's funny. And I, and I got to say, uh, I, I don't know, man. Some of the, the lines that Fred Williamson delivered, it definitely seemed like he was straight out of a black exploitation movie. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they purposely did that or if that's just his acting chops because he seemed so out of place in this movie as far as like mm-hmm. his lines were cheesy. Um he was waiting too damn long. Like he was over there giving a monologue right before he killed somebody. I'm like, okay, just get, get to it. You know, like uh, <laughs> he just seemed right. like there was even a, a scene and I totally forgot this, but rewatching it a couple days ago, there's a scene where Fred Williamson is like, man, this reminds me of my time in Nam when I was building up bodies of like, uh, is, mm-hmm. who gives a fuck? What the fuck is happening with vampires? <laughs> like how, how, was this, how would this coincide with vampires? <laughs> Uh, facts, facts. Like, what's and, yeah, everybody about? just sitting around like it's story time, just like looking at them. Like, yeah, like, okay. like what are you talking about? We, we we fight for our lives out this mother. Yeah. <laughs> like, unless you got a knob, or yeah, unless you got a plan or you got some weapons up your ass. Like, wh- uh, where are they at? Like, wh- what's going on? <laughs> you just not just see uh, this vampire <laughs> play this motherfucker as a cello. Yeah. You gotta- <laughs> Yeah, I'm not we trying to. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a, another instrument over here. I'm not trying to turn be turned into a saxophone or some shit. But uh, yeah, I thought that was I thought that was pretty wild. But yeah, they pretty much do, they pretty much come together, which I thought was an interesting band, uh, you know, uh, of, of co-stars to kind of throw in the mix of already the cast that we're introduced to. Um, and this is where our second movie basically happens because we go from a crime, pretty much a crime drama, to a uh, you know a horror. Uh, uh, you know, horror movie, a uh, full blown horror movie. Um, and then, you know, we get the reanimated bodies of everybody that got shot, which I thought was pretty cool. We get to see um, Danny Trejo comes back, Cheech comes back because they've just been shot. But I, so, so this is the thing they got super meta with it, which I really do love because. Uh, they're like, well, how do we kill vampires? And they all just start naming shit. Garlic, crosses, holy water, right? Which I thought was cool because they didn't play it as a joke. They were like, they were real serious about like, hey, we got to get mm-hmm. these things, right? Um, and and Jacob, uh, played by Harvey Keitel, says something I thought was really funny. He goes, 
do we does anybody has anybody read an actual book about vampires or are we just remembering shit from mo- a movie that we saw <laughs> and, when, and then when he said that i was like i was like that's funny but also a book of vamp is there actual books of vampires like uh, what you mean like how to kill them or yeah like this is a fake thing right i mean this is a fictional uh, yeah. did people like hundreds of years ago believe in vampires it was like was there like a play-by-play handbook on lore of vampires or like a vampire bible killing yeah. thing i don't i don't i don't know i don't like why would so. that even exist <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like it's like if me and you got in a in a in a in a possession situation like we're in a house and then like someone gets possessed and I'm and then you look at me and you're like hey David do you know anything about how to how to cure this demon thing <laughs> oh yeah let me let me grab the fucking necronomicon it ain't real <laughs> it's not a real thing yeah yeah that's you true. know that's true I, yeah. I thought they that was do have funny. priests though like that that like um exorcism what do they call it uh yeah but that wouldn't uh, yeah exorcist but like i wouldn't really yeah. uh, uh i mean that wouldn't pertain to any of the vampire stuff no hell no yeah I think that nah. has to do with like demonic possession if that's happening for real but like yeah yeah you know, but i don't think it's any vampire books so <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> just the shit we hear in the movies I would like to, because we had talked about, or you had mentioned Nosferatu's earlier. I mean, that goes back. What is that? Like a 1920s movie? That's like a silent film, right? Yeah, that's like, yeah. So, yeah, that's like 1919 or some yeah, shit like something that. Yeah, something like that, know. man. We're talking about, you know, the man. Yeah, that's like the birth of cinema, basically. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that creepy ass <laughs> looking face. I still haven't seen that movie, yeah. but I always see that scene, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I could watch this. This is cre- Even with no, no dialogue. You know? Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird movie. I seen it in a in a theater. Not, I mean, I'm oh, not that old, but like they played it um, here one time, and I seen it. Well, that's it's cool. creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, that has to be based off of some kind <laughs> of uh, story or some kind of fable or legend or whatever. And and mm-hmm. that's cool. I want. I really kind of want to go back and see uh, how far back uh, vampire lore goes because maybe there is some. Uh, crazy like uh like remember that movie the tom hanks with the da vinci code when they found out all these like secrets mm-hmm. and shit and mm-hmm. maybe there is like an underground cave of like all this like yeah. stories of, of vampires and creatures and shit that we don't even know that they try to keep hidden from us i don't know yeah yeah i heard it was legends of vampire i mean i think it comes from like a lore it definitely comes from a lore because it was it was before dracula mm-hmm. you know that vampires were um mentioned so i i don't know wow. you know but i don't know yeah, I definitely have to check show. that out. But, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of like where we're introduced to like uh, all the things that can obviously kill them. Uh, for the majority, it seems like they use you know holy water uh, because he ends up blessing just straight up water, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Because he does regain his faith mm-hmm. again. I'm talking about Jacob, played by Harvey Keitel. Um, and then I thought it was pretty cool because they start using like there's one scene where he uses the shotgun with the baseball bat as a cross. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was um, cool. Yeah. And then also they mentioned something that I don't know so if. Fair. Yeah. I don't know if they mentioned this in other vampire movies. Maybe you can correct me. But uh, I think Fred Williamson says something or Tom Savini says something to the effect of these vampires are really strong. They have super strength, but their bodies are soft. So like there's a scene where Fred mm-hmm. Williamson just punches his hand through the guy and rips out his heart. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? I think that that's some shit. Other, other movies? No, 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 no. I think that's some stuff they just made up. You know, for okay. for their movie to to I guess for gag effects. But like, no, mm. I never, I never really heard of that. I, I guess so. But like, remember that dude in Fright Night? He kind of mm-hmm. died quick. Like, like his friend. Like, I don't know what he was. He was a ghoul or whatever the hell that guy was. He was like the vampire's friend, Jerry Dandridge's friend. And then, oh, like, yeah, he yeah. Just oh, I never found out who steps. that. Wa- I never found out what that guy was. Like, <laughs> I don't know his boy. <laughs> yeah, but that he was, was like boy. Yeah, but yeah. what kind of ghoul was he though? <laughs> I don't know. He walked around in the daylight and shit. He was taking care of business and shit. But like, nobody knew what he was. Like, what the fuck? He, what? I thought you was a guy, bro. I, like, I, then I, you just get. Yeah, I remember he got shot a bunch of times, and then like he started like melting or something, like weird <laughs> yeah, shit. Like, like what the? <laughs> yeah, just, like. Goo started coming out of his hand. Like I was yeah, like, goose. what? And he turns like what a full skeleton. I was like, God, what? <laughs> I don't know what he was, bro. Like, <laughs> what is this, this boy? What is uh, Jerry Dandridge's boy in Fright Night? That's got to be ass. Is, is he a ghoul? Yeah, That's what I think. Like, because you remember, like in vampire shit, like they would have um, somebody take care of like Dracula shit, like the. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, an yeah Igor, like, like an Igor, like an Igor or something. Like an Igor type mug. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> That's funny, man. 
<laughs> but yeah, that's mentioned along the way in this film. And I thought it was a, a cool little a thing to insert because before this, you're seeing all that. Like you're already seeing them kind of get their, you know, arms ripped off and stuff like that. And, 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 and the vampires themselves are actually ripping off people's arms. So it's like, damn, they got, mm-hmm. they must have superhuman strength. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, they just kind of uh, 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 hunker down and and just they have to band together in that spot in that mm-hmm. titty twister and and find all the weapons that they could um, mm-hmm. to basically save their ass. And I thought that was this is a pretty cool uh, scene where they all got to kind of come together and awesome. and see what the, yeah see what they can ultimately do. Um, you know, uh, we do find out along the way too. You start hearing bats outside which i thought was really fucking cool like it was super creepy like the bats are trying to get in mm, the bats are trying right. to get in it's like oh my yeah, yeah you hear the bats like slamming against the uh uh because cause everybody's like what is that noise and then i think one of them mentions it's bats and it's like oh fuck they're in the dead of night too like is that even dog it's probably like 2 a.m like this is when all this peak shit starts happening right mm-hmm. and uh it's just it's just one of those creepy things man so this is like they've destroyed all the vampires inside so far all of the all the strippers man all the all the girls that are dancing they're they're throwing them like on uh you know stakes through their heart yeah, left yeah. and right yeah they're hitting them with stakes left and right they yeah. which is cool because they just you can make a stake out of anything man i mean they, they just make them out of the bottom of the the table legs or whatever and they're just driving them through the you know the hearts of these things and there's blood squirting everywhere great That's practical awesome. effects just it, it's just so much aw- so awesome and you said it was what, kmb uh studios or yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg Nicotero uh, is the head of it. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. It gets mm-hmm. real so. slapsticky, but cool. You know what I'm saying? It's still, you know what I'm saying? Cool. It's like it's like the Evil Dead 2 almost. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With that type of... Yeah, and then, and then the melee of things, I thought something interesting really uh, was pretty was pretty funny, too. Uh, well, we kind of got a transformation, but not like the uh, Salma High transformation. So Tom Savini does end up getting bit, but he hides it, you know, which we, we've we seen in movies where people get bit, like usually, zo- yeah, yeah, usually zombies. And uh, they'll get bit because, you know, obviously they start changing, right? But Tom Savini has a weird transformation, man, where, you know, yeah, he, he gets like a, like a, a, a real sharp vampire tooth and he's trying to he's trying to hide it and uh and then his hand starts growing all ghoulishly like with long nails and stuff like that and then that that kid scott like oh this is when they're listening to the damn nom story (laughs) (laughs) so their backs are turned and then i think scott turns it around and he like looks at him and he's just like oh what's happening back here you're kind of acting funny (laughs) (laughs) yeah he was looking yeah yeah he was maybe what i was looking yeah like yeah so he ends up uh uh popping up behind frost fred williamson uh and and, and while he's telling his nom story and then he bites him right in the neck um which leads to the oh the the worst of the worst scenario man fred williamson picks up tom savini and throws him through the fucking front door which then all the bats come in and 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 by then there's a cool shot too I'll, I'll throw it up here on screen if i can uh where all the bats start coming in and fred williamson holds out his hands like oh yeah, and yeah. His mouth is like, ah, and yeah, he's yeah, all yeah, transformed yeah. already and it's such once again I, I i every scene i was like remarking at like the makeup department man it was like they did a great job on this movie um yeah so you know, I guess, but yeah, by then they they uh, everyone runs down the hallway. They find another door, which is kind of like a you know like a side door, or like a closet area. It's like a, it's like a little separate room area, right? Mm-hmm. But the dad doesn't make it out. Also, the dad got bit. Man, yeah. Harvey Keitel got bit, dude. That that was a tough one, bro. Yeah, because yeah. you know they're building up his story. He's you know the head of the family now. You know he lost his yeah. wife, and you know even though he did regain his faith again. He gets bit and they really make him out to be like, you know, even though I, I got bit, I'm not going to be a, you know, a, a chump about it. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to just sit here and mm-hmm. sulk in it. Like, I'm going to just, I'm going to take out as many as I can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he ends up, you know, running back and, and, uh, cause he gets stuck out there in the bar and they show a cool ass shot right here. This is when he gets the, uh, the, the, the cross made from the uh, shotgun and the, uh, mm-hmm. uh the bat and yeah. he gets up from the bar because you could just hear like, you know, kind of vampires like, yeah, like creeping, making like, like yeah, just creeping, making noise. And he stands up from the bar and they show all the vampires. Oh, my God, dude. This is like 80 people. It looks like in makeup, full body makeup. And I'm like, full body. what yeah. was the budget? Because there's 
rows and rows of people that are full dressed. Body. Yeah, full body. Because half of them are. Mm-hmm. I love how they did that too. Because if they're if they're bats, they wouldn't have clothes on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know good what I'm point. saying. Good so point. when they would yeah. tra- when they would transform back into humans, the human form, they would be naked, and that's what they showed. Mm-hmm. I like that continuity. Like there's there's actually attention to detail there. I didn't think about that. That's that's a yeah. great point. Yeah, yeah. It's not like the like the Incredible Hulk when he gets all big and then his pants don't rip and then it goes back to normal. <laughs> it's like how the fuck did that happen? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I thought they did a good job of that. But it was also creepy. That that shot always stuck out to me as a kid because it looked very like they look all slimy too, which is like a good you know they they really like uh you know they made them look like um not so clean cut like like they were just have makeup on like they looked. Like just slimy and like blood, like dripping yeah, from their mouth their and shit. Long, yeah. yeah, hair all long and 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 all like crazy looking. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, yeah, that's when uh, that's when Jacob ends up, you know, getting uh, uh, back with his family, and he goes, you know what? We're gonna just get whatever we can find. And we're gonna just take them out. And that's when uh, George Clooney, Seth, he pulls out that. You remember that like that drill? He puts like some crazy like piece of wood, like a stake at the end of it. Yeah, and it's like yeah. a some like like thrusting like pumping drill that has like yeah, i was like, like what <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, it's almost like a jackhammer with like yeah, a, yeah. with a stake on the end i was thinking at first it looks hella cool but like how effective could that be <laughs> like, i don't know probably you're gonna, that. Yeah, you're gonna get so you're gonna get a vampire stuck in your like stake and you're gonna be like all right get off now like you can't pull that yeah. just out <laughs> No, it's going to fall off. It's going to stick in there. Now you just got this drill that's useless. You know exactly. I mean? It's too much. I mean, let me ask you something. So if you were in a t- in a, bar, in a bar, the Titty Twister, surrounded by, let's say, 80 to 100 z- uh, uh, vampires, mm-hmm. what weapon would you pick in that? Because I know we've talked about, I think, or I've talked about it in general, you know, what weapon would people use in a zombie attack, but in a vampire attack? What are you using, man? Mm-hmm. If you had any weapon at your disposal. Oh, not just including in the movie. Any weapon. Any weapon. Yeah. In a vampire one. In a, yeah, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. One of those, you know what? Uh, the, like um, one of those water blasters, you know what I'm saying, with a backpack full of holy water, you know what I'm saying? That, so that's what like Scott uses. Backpack. I don't know if you remember yeah, that's yeah. what Scott he's a super uses. Super soaker, yeah. right? A super, yeah, he's soaker. A super soaker. Yeah. But you don't <laughs> run out of that quick. If you got a backpack, you can just kind of keep them off them and, and kind of burn them. Well, you remember those I mean, you remember those 90s super soakers, man. Those were the truth where they had the big pack yeah, on the yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what I'm talking about. You give me one of those, you know what I'm saying? Or a big that's pack true. type of industrial pack or something. Yeah. I'll be good. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. With okay, that's water. a good I'm going with holy water. They also did a good effect going to that uh, weapon, by the way, um, because Scott also not only had the super soaker uh, deal with holy water, but he also had like balloons filled with holy water. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yep. Uh, there's a scene because his dad does ultimately turn and his dad told, tells him straight up. He goes, I want you guys to promise me and when I turn, you're going to kill me. And they're like, all right, I promise, dad. Now, when the dad finally ends up turning Jacob, because he he turns almost immediately. It's funny because when they're all kind of prepping, he goes, all right, I've been bit, guys. I got about an hour before I turned. That motherfucker turns in like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, he's done. He, he tur- as soon as they get out there and he gets surrounded by all these vampires, like he takes out a couple, but then he like starts, you know, doing like the twitching and then he turns around and he's in full you know, vampire mode. Mm-hmm. And what does Scott do? Scott freezes up and he gets bit, man. I mean, that's, that's mm-hmm. his, that's his dad, but it's like, mm-hmm. he told him, you know, if I turn, you got to kill me. And he doesn't. And he ends up getting bit in the neck. And, um, yeah, it was crazy. And, and, you know, once again, kid death is always crazy on screen, horror movie or yeah. not. You yeah, know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. No matter when kids die. Yeah. I seen your last of us too. Um, well, oh yeah, <laughs> last of well, episode one. She had full tears, son. <laughs> Man, kid death left and right in that in that damn episode. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, a little troubling for me um, to see that stuff sometimes, just because you know they they didn't get to live their life. Obviously, I know these are right, fictional right, fictional right. characters, but still, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, but before you know, uh, you know, or after Scott gets bitten but not taken out, he grabs a water balloon. <laughs> smashes it over his dad's head and man this shit melts 
his face and it looks so damn cool once again shouts out to the makeup department oh yeah his face like wow. melts halfway and he's like Ugh. like he's over there hanging like one eyeball mm-hmm. hanging out just like you know and uh and then he just you wow. know just d- dies basically and it, so many cool kills you know but scott so ends up getting eaten a lot of these guys end up getting eaten uh but uh you know and then it's only kate and seth man who would have thought juliet lewis and george clooney uh back to back and we see that there's like a little a beam of light coming through and it's like okay it's it's, it's dusk you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it, it's funny because um i'm sorry not dusk uh, it's dawn uh yeah. so it's funny because earlier in the movie they were talking about hey what what kills vampires right and none of them remember that the sunlight kills because they kind of were like okay the sunlight's coming through right but it's not until some of the uh vampires that start creeping up to the sun you know where it's coming through and they kind of get burned by it by the light yeah that's mm-hmm. when they realize, oh shit! All right, start breaking all. You start shooting the, you know, the doors and the the windows and all that stuff. And uh, you know, ultimately, um, uh, they don't uh, even say it, dude. They just start kind of doing it, right? Mm-hmm. They don't say like shoot out the windows. Start yeah. shoot, I think he tells. I think he does tell Kate to start shooting at the doors okay. or whatever because she has a gun too. Uh, but then we get introduced to Cheech number three. He starts, hey, hey, is my friend Seth in there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then he's like, hey, he goes. He goes, shoot the door or like kick in the door. And then his men just boom and they blast open the door. And that's when that door opens up. Woo, these motherfuckers yeah, are right. blowing up left and right. That was so Fire. cool. Yes. Yoda flame. Yes. 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 Such also a cool. Satisfying ending. Yeah. Such a satisfying ending, man, to see uh, uh, such a like there's at least 20 people in full makeup that are blowing up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I mean, not literally, but like, you know, they're, they're dummies or whatever, just blowing up and the prosthetics mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really cool. Oh yeah. Also th- there's a disco ball on the top. I don't know if you saw that. And the light starts reflecting off that and just hitting everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such clever stuff here. You know, so very that's a clever lot of kill. And, and, and Tarantino, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Very, very clever stuff here with the vampire lore and very had so much fun with it. They kept it. Yeah. It, so creative how they kept it so serious at the beginning with all this dark stuff you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying it wasn't really funny at all at the beginning no. and it turned it into this yeah batshit crazy horror movie but still had the emotional uh beats of the characters you know what i'm saying and the character development that you uh, cared when people died you know and you never knew who was going to make it out of this damn thing like you said it was uh kate and clooney at the end who would have yeah. thought that yeah, yeah exactly you don't you don't think that it's it's uh you know two people that were well clooney you know uh basically kidnapped her and her in her family um and then at the end they kind of have to come together to stay alive and that's mm-hmm. one of those you know you come together uh whether you like the person or not just for the just for the simple fact of staying alive right mm-hmm. and it's crazy you get put in that situation but they make it through the night ultimately and um <laughs> i thought it was funny seth goes hey man you know what uh he goes you picked this fucking spot what the fuck is you know the matter with you did you not know it was inhabited by vampires and he goes what he's like, he's like what i thought it was just a spot man i don't know whatever i just drove past it and he goes well guess what my brother is dead and her whole fucking family's dead and he goes you know what he goes you got to give me something and he goes well, what do you want man and he goes all right 15 percent instead of you taking 30 percent of my cut and he's like come on man and he goes what do you mean come on her whole family's dead <laughs> he goes my brother ain't coming back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we just fought vampires and he's like all right 20 <laughs> he's like all right 20 <laughs> percent. i thought it was pretty funny yeah they're yeah, still throwing good. still throwing mm-hmm. some comedy in there you know after all that shit but you know ultimately <clears throat> i thought it was interesting too that uh kate I don't know if you caught this at the end or if you remember this. Kate is like, hey, uh, Seth, do you want any company? Hmm. And I was like, oh, this is like some, uh, uh, what do they call it? Like Stockholm syndrome? Like when you're, when you, hmm. not, not, maybe, kidnapper. yeah, maybe not fall in love with your kidnapper, but you like, you think that they're a safe person to be around. And it's like, what the mm-hmm. fuck? Like this person just mm-hmm. kidnapped you and like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, ultimately led to the death of your whole family. It's like, yeah, but she, maybe thought at this point like i have no family back home you know no nobody's yeah, around yeah, when she, yeah no nobody's nobody's around um but i thought that was always interesting like i mean and she's technically underage i think i don't know but we still haven't got that's there, what i'm but. saying she, I, that's what i'm saying she might have been 18 mm. i'm guessing 
I'm guessing 18. I could be wrong. Could be yeah. wrong. I'm guessing 18, though, if she want to go with him yeah. at this point. Because that would be creepy if she was, like, 16. It was like, come on, you know. I yeah. Know. I'm guessing but, 18. I'm guessing 18. Yeah. But but he does do the right thing, and he goes, you know what, Kate? He goes, go home. He goes, I may be a bastard, but I ain't a fucking bastard. I, I thought that was so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Does, he does say that because he's like, he's like uh, I ain't like my brother, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was funny. Uh, that so was they, insane. yeah, he give, he gives her a couple of stacks. I don't know, like thirty grand or some of that. And he's like, you know, be, you know, we're on our way. You know, we're, we're separate, uh, and and that's kind of it. She goes in the RV. He takes off in like some I don't know little like sports car or something like that. They all go their separate ways, and they do one of the coolest cliffhanger endings that I think led to all the sequels, where they pan out of the titty twister. From behind, though, yeah. the behind shot, yeah. and we see that it's like a Mayan temple or something, or some kind of temple, right? I think it was a Mayan yeah. thing because... Yeah, it was uh, like a Mayan temple. Yeah, because I think the whole Sama Hayek satanic uh, pandemonium uh, thing had to kind of play with that. Uh, but it looked like a like a temple, and there were skulls and, like, skeletons. Like, it looked crazy, but it's always cool and to see, trucks. like... In the, yeah, <laughs> trucks everywhere, all uh, yeah. you know. And it's always cool right. because... In the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, I don't actually I don't remember too much in the 90s. I remember it being more of an 80s thing where they would take like a drawing and they would throw it in the movie and you could tell it was like a drawing, but they made mm-hmm. it seem like it was a frame and they zoomed out. Mm-hmm. Matt remember? paintings. Yeah. Matt, exactly. Thank you. I, mm-hmm. I, didn't know, I didn't know the name of it, but uh, they kind mm-hmm. of played it like it was a frame in the movie. Yes. And they would usually end on that shot or whatever. Um and that's it. That's it. We get the, you know, we get the that's credits amazing. and we, it's a dark night. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I just want to talk about, speak on that, you know, ending with, you know, Absolutely. that Mayan temple with all the truck drivers and all the skull there. That is, that again, uh, uh, clever writing by uh, Tarantino that just told a story right quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just told a whole story and gave the whole thing just a, another deeper meaning to the lore. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I just thought that was dope. That's one of my favorite shots of any movie. You know what I'm saying? Not very just cool. shots, but just like it, that was very, very cool. It was already a cool movie. Then you did, you, then you did that. You know what I'm saying? Because, that was just yeah, because it's not necessarily a cliffhanger. Like, oh, there's there could be more of them. It's just like, oh, like when, like you said, there is some more deeper lore that this could have, you know, uh, had a, 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 I don't know, a deeper like just it could have it could have gone on for forever like it could have yeah, gone on yeah. for uh, since the dawn of man or something i don't know yeah uh, exactly it, you know <laughs> it, and it's just been kept a secret such a long time but uh it's so funny because it's it's almost a secret but it's not like it's so out in the open it's like how did no one like notice that you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah it, because they probably yeah. b- b- by the time they uncover it they're already dead by the vampires <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, like exactly. yeah exactly no. but, but uh, it, is, it is cool i might want to check out a sequel or two man i don't know but yeah, I don't know if it's going to be along the same quality of this one, but I do yeah, have... I don't remember anything to go. Okay. Yeah, but I do have some uh, trivia that we can go over. I know we went kind of deep on this one a couple of hours, but let's get into some trivia know. that I thought was pretty cool along the way. So cool. there's a line in this movie uh, where we get introduced to Salma Hayek. It's like uh, the first transformation shot, and uh, she she has her foot on George Clooney. He's like laying on his back. She has her fo- foot on George Clooney, and she basically ta- says... In her dialogue, which remember I mentioned she didn't have that much dialogue, but this is kind of her like scene right here, <laughs> besides the dance scene, obviously. And she goes, uh, she goes, I'm not gonna kill you like I killed your brother. I'm gonna make you a slave. And she goes, mm. I'm gonna make you lick the dog shit off of my boot heel. Mm. And she goes, Welcome to slavery. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. Yes. So I do. Yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, when she's talking, she's like. Salma, but then when she says mm-hmm. "Welcome to slavery," like her voice changes and she's that mm-hmm. the the I don't even know what that is because it's not full vampire; it's like a hybrid or something. And she almost looks reptilian. Yeah, she's a reptilian, bald head with a strong yeah. neck neck muscles or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that like yeah, a half definitely. transformation or thing? And how can she transform mm-hmm. back and forth so quick? I don't know. How they, <laughs> knew mm-hmm. that she was like the boss, though. You know, she was like <laughs> she might have been a different a, breed. Uh, yeah, a different. Breed. Yeah, or a different breed, or the, the you know the video game boss. You know, I don't know. <laughs> like, a, like yeah, she might have been the, one of the queens or something, or or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think but, she was. Yeah. yeah. So she does say, uh, "Welcome to slavery," and uh, George Clooney replies, "No thanks. I've already had a wife." Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that line was improvised, bro. 
Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. And uh, director uh, Robert Rodriguez never intended it to be in the final cut, but after the studio included the line in the trailer, he felt obligated to include that in the film. Nice. That's crazy. Nice. It's in the trailer. I made it to the trailer. Nice. Yeah. I never knew that. That's and dope. if you That's if you really think about it, there are a lot of shit that, that a lot of scenes that they cut out in tr- from the trailer, and you're like, well, what was that? Li- what was that? And, you know, and sometimes they'll include it like in the TV, uh, the TV version of the movies, you know, mm. stuff like that. Oh, along okay. the way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so, man. yeah, it's crazy. But uh, also, Salma Hayek has a real fear of snakes and had always refused to be near them. Naturally, oh, wow. when she read the script, she knew her phobia would prevent her from taking the part. Robert Rodriguez wow. conned her into thinking that Madonna was ready to nab the part instead. So Salma Hayek spent yeah. two months with therapists to overcome her fear. Oh, wow. That's no, crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad it was Salma Hayek instead of Madonna. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine. Mad- I mean, yeah. I know Madonna was doing movies and stuff like that around, yeah. especially around that time, too. I think 80s and 90s, she was doing movies. It would have um, been the same, no bro. <laughs> I don't not think to take nothing against, uh, 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 not not to take nothing away from Madonna though, but like yeah, it, that scene wouldn't have been the same without because uh, I, Selma Hayek. Yeah, because I think I had mentioned in in one of the trivia before, like uh, it instead of the Satanic Pandemonium, it was gonna be called like Blonde Something. I forgot mm-hmm. I I'd mentioned it, but uh, I think that was gonna be used for uh for Madonna, man. Maybe she really was gonna be. So originally, yeah. let's see. Yeah, originally, I can see her. Yeah. Uh, so the original name was going to be called Blonde Death. That was going to be Madonna's character name. So maybe Madonna really was going to be cast yeah. in this. Yeah, maybe she was wrong. Maybe she might. I can see Madonna doing it, but like, I don't know. I mean, like, um, like what I'm like, I don't think she would have stopped the show like Selma Hayek. Not to take nothing away from yeah. Madonna. I think she could have did it. She 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 would have sold it more with her. You know, what I'm saying with her eyes and you know, what I'm saying. You know her sense. Madonna rest, would be a big draw, though. Like as far as putting that name on the damn poster, that would yeah, be a yeah, huge right. draw, especially that time. Yeah, think about it. Think about it, because uh, Selma Hyde was not a big draw at all. Yeah, at that point, you know, she did Desperado so. in this. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's at it. At this point, yeah. So yeah, Madonna has been like, oh, they got Madonna. You have to go see it. You know what I'm saying? So it's- I can see it working for sure. Absolutely. But, you know, like, I think it's embedded in our brain. We see Selma Hyatt with those curves and be like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. Sha- like Shakira <laughs> said, man, them hips don't lie. So, yeah, them yeah. hips don't lie. Yeah, she had them hips. She had everything. <laughs> she was in perfect shape. But Madonna could have pulled it off, though. I, I, you know, you know, you know, yeah. Maybe. could have pulled it off. In Maybe. another, another uh, multiverse, huh? <laughs> in a multiverse. Yeah. Right, right. So it says another bit of trivia. It says, if you look closely when Cheech Marin was playing... Uh, the customs agent, his name badge says Oscar Marin, name of Cheech's real father, an LAPD officer. So he used his oh. his dad's name, who was a real LAPD officer. That's that's cool. I didn't even, I didn't even yeah, catch that really. Yeah. Uh, also, I think I told you this before, but uh, I'll read it again. Uh, Quentin Tarantino originally gave the script uh, to makeup effects technician Robert Kurtzman to direct uh, when he couldn't commit. Tarantino showed the script to Robert Rodriguez, who eagerly signed on. Mm. Okay. Well, that's kind of what I was saying before, that he was originally set to direct, uh, but he set, mm-hmm. decided not to so he could focus more on the gecko character. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you can tell he's all over that film, Qu- uh, Tarantino. You know what I'm saying? His writing, his mm-hmm. little quips and stuff. Just like uh, like Poltergeist was directed by Texas Chainsaw Massacre director, Toby whatever. But you can tell Spielberg was all Toby over Hooper. Poltergeist. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Toby Hooper. Yeah, yeah. But you can tell it's Spielberg. It's Spielberg. You're like, oh, yeah. What? But Toby so, Hooper got his weirdness. Yeah. So I got another question. So we were talking about George Clooney in the early days, right? So I'm looking at uh, early George Clooney. Uh, it looks like, man, he did a lot of TV work back in the day. This guy was in Return of the Killer Tomatoes, bro. In yep, 88. I remember that. Good I actually remember Lord. that. Lord. <laughs> he was in, shit. Yeah, he was in some TV series. He was in some TV movies. He was in the Golden mm-hmm. Girls, like you said, as mm-hmm. Bob Hopkins. Uh, he was always only one episode of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was also in a, in a couple episodes of Murder, She Wrote. Damn. Yeah, Murder he was she even. Wrote. Yeah, he was even in uh, some horror movies back in the in the late eighties too. So he's done a lot of stuff. But let me ask you: in ninety six, so doing all this stuff, uh, it seems like he was doing like movies for ten years at this point, uh, and a lot of TV. Uh, oh, he also did a show. He did nineteen episodes in ninety three to ninety four 
of a show called Sisters. You ever heard that? He was no. a de- detective. Actually, I'll put no. I'll put his picture up on screen right now. But uh, let me see when he actually started, so I can kind of vaguely. Uh... So technically, technically, he was uncredited, but he was working since 1978. Okay. In a TV miniseries. Wow! And he was in Grizzly Two: The Revenge. Wow! You... When did Grizzly Two in the eighties? Eighty three. Do you seen Grizzly One? I just wow. recently saw it. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I, I think I did. I, I totally forgot it though. I, I know I see Grizzly. I know I see Grizzly. I know. I know. I know. I got it somewhere. But uh, one of my uh, awesome Flix Talk family members, man, he they sent me uh, uh, the Grizzly to check out. That movie's badass. You got to watch that. Right. It's a, it's I actually pretty. It so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, but they made a, a sequel to it, which I heard was not good, <laughs> called Grizzly to yeah. the Revenge, and he stars in that. that. Yeah, he stars <laughs> in that. So let's just say he's been roughly working for about 12, 13 years at this point. So in 96, how much do you think they offered him to play the part of uh, 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 Seth Gecko? Uh, I'm going to say... Yeah, I'm getting a movie for seven million. This is third one, so this movie probably costs a lot more. So I'm gonna say one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You're pretty close, man. Uh, yeah, two hundred and fifty thousand oh, dollars to okay. appear in this film. Yes, yeah, so, I mean this was the mid '90s. Uh, even though he already had a name, they weren't paying actors like millions like they are nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah, he wasn't. He, yeah. he wasn't quite there yet. He wasn't quite million dollar yet. It, but is he was that, on his that's- way. That's still a huge, um, I feel like in 96, what would be the inflation on that? I kind of want to look that up really quick. So uh, let's see. Yeah, so I did look it up. So $250,000 in 1996 is the equivalent to about $472,000 in 2023. So about half a million dollars nowadays. Okay. Half a million dollars for a vampire movie? That ain't bad. I feel like. I feel like this is one of those movies though you got to get like your hands dirty because I mean with all those explosives you know squibs and all that shit flying everywhere yeah, you're gonna yeah. get you know you're gonna get have to get rough and tough with that role so mm-hmm. I mean maybe this was definitely I I would say that this is definitely a uh, an, an earned two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar movie yeah. for him yeah. and it's different it's yeah. different for him mm-hmm. so yeah yeah it's different from and then it's kind of it's kind of catapulted his career right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Become the George Clooney, Oscar winning George Clooney, George Clooney, right? Yeah. Even though he did like like Batman and Robin after this, but like <laughs> I wanted to check out some of the movies. Yeah, real quick that he did do um right after this. So the same year he did a it's so funny how he goes directly from a horror action movie to like a rom com or something like that with Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. Uh he did a movie called One Fine Day. And then in ninety seven yeah, he did Batman and Robin. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely remember that. <laughs> and then he did an, yeah, he did an action movie in 1997 as well called The Peacemaker, which looks like some kind of a born ultimatum movie or something. And I remember then, hearing about that. And then Out of Sync? Out of Sight in 98. In 98. So I guess he did story. stick. Yeah, I guess he did stick with the, I didn't see that one, but I guess he did stick with that uh, action mm-hmm. thriller role type for a while that's kind of cool man I, I always i guess when you look at him you always think he's kind of like the rom-com guy but then again you know in 90 99 he did three kings that was a good movie yeah that was a damn good movie yeah, yeah. three kings was fire what with Wahlberg and ice cube mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, right yeah and then uh what it gotta be around here somewhere where brother we're out thou right that was the next one right after that he did 2000 oh, okay. that's one of my favorites uh that's i think it's cohen brother movie and yeah, uh that one's like straight like not slapsticky but the comedy's like pretty crazy and it's a timepiece you know uh and it's like it's just a bizarre like they're on the run type of movie mm-hmm. you know and and then he ends up uh you know reuniting uh with rodriguez once again in 2001 to play in spy kids Okay, wow. I, get, I, I, get, I don't either, but it says he's a character here called Devlin. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what Clooney a trip, did man. Who did like, it? Like from Grizzly 2 to, you know, uh, <laughs> to Spy Kids. <laughs> to Spy- hey, you made it, bro. You made it now. You made it. You made it now, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. So I don't want to make this too short. I know it's hard to say with two hours, over two hours. But uh, so ultimately, what were your thoughts, you know, overall? on from dusk till dawn from 96 oh yo uh, to be honest with you it's an all-time classic i mean i don't know what else to say like five out of five really because if you take this premise from this almost dead serious movie like we watching some type of effed up 
Tarantino movie and turn it into this love affair with B movies, but still have deep character development, great cast. We I I, I uh, yet to mention this awesome cast that they had from from Cheech to Fred Williamson to you know, Julia Lewis to uh, Clooney Tom Savini. to Harvey Car- Har- yeah yeah Harvey Cartel, Tom Savini, uh, you know, playing these little cameos. But what more fun could you have on a Friday night or a Saturday night but watching Dust Till Dawn and chilling? It's no way someone could look at this film and say they will they were not entertained unless they're like yeah. you know a-holes or something you know what i'm saying or, <laughs> or, or pretentious like i'm too pretentious i like my horror more of uh baba dookish more psychological thriller and that's fine too but there is no way you can look at this film and say it is not entertaining is it super scary i don't think so it's the parts in it that that's that scary but i think that it just works on a, a a more entertainment level and you are emotionally invested with the characters. So yes, this is an all time classic five out of five, how they built the lore from the beginning to the end shot with the trucks, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the Mayan temple was just done flawlessly by all parties. You can tell they were having a ton of fun there. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of drugs going on in this set. <laughs> Cause it looked like everybody was having fun, bro. Oh yeah, man. Well, that's, yeah, man. You're coming out the gate five out of five. That's a great one too. I really wanted to give this a five out of five because it is a classic. Uh, I think I got to give it a 4.5 though, just because of some of the acting from, you know, uh, Savini and and, and then Fred yeah, Williamson yeah. <laughs> was kind of not there obviously, but I overall thinking about it now that we're talking about it for a couple hours, you could tell that Tarantino and, and Robert Rodriguez, they love working together and they pulled mm-hmm. uh, this. We see what this is what Quentin, Quentin does, you know, especially with Jackie Brown. He made that movie because he wanted to work with uh, Pam, Greer, Pam Greer and then yeah. also, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the guy that died recently. Uh, uh, what's his name? He plays like the bounty guy. I'm drawing a blank, but uh, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I can't think of his name. Super He's drawing awesome. a blank. Um, yeah, let me yeah, see. He got the Maxwell Re- coffee haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look him up real quick. Uh, Robert Forrester. Sorry, Robert, Robert Forrester. Forrester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Tarantino's been very vocal about how he wanted to make that movie in particular because he just wanted to work with those people that he grew up with, like watching, right? Mm-hmm. And I think they did that with this movie. You know, of course, he, we know he loves Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel starred in his first movie, Reservoir Dogs, right? Uh, which mm-hmm. has a huge lore behind that. There's a huge, like, mm-hmm. that movie almost didn't get made because they didn't have the funding. But um, mm-hmm. Rodriguez, you know, I feel like pulled Tom Savini because that was a huge inspiration for him making, you know, the movies that he makes and or wanting to make and that he grew up on. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that they probably pulled. Once again, Fred Williamson that they grew up watching and stuff like that. They pu- they had fun with this movie. You could definitely tell it, even though the first part is uh, a serious subject nature and almost like a natural born killer crime movie. Obviously, mm-hmm. it turns into that. Uh, I don't want to say B horror movie, but definitely like uh, uh, you know the midnight movie drive in style mm-hmm. uh, splatter fest that we got with vampire and they're over there playing the guitar with the you know mm-hmm. wackiness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. and maybe that adds to some of the Tom Savini acting. Maybe that gives it a pass for some of the, maybe they purposely yeah. wanted him to act like, Hey, we I want you to so. act. Yeah. Like this, uh, like kind of mm-hmm. campy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, then okay. But I could have done with some of the dialogue and some of the scenes, like the nom scene was like, totally. <laughs> I keep going back to that nom scene. Um, yeah, I, love it. I so, feel you though. Yeah, yeah. So that being said, I think I'm going to give it a 4.5. I'll give it a point on this you. one. 4.5 out of five. No, 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 no. Yeah. I respect that 4.5 because it Definitely it does rewatch. get ridiculous. Yo, it gets ridiculous. The movie gets ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, the shit is ridiculous, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, even more ridiculous than, like, Evil Dead 2, you know? Oh, jeez. But, but they still... <laughs> I can't wait till we talk <laughs> about that next month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They still kept a level of scary here, which is balls to the wall freaking crazy. So I, I respect that 4.5. And you can obviously tell I agree with you there. 100% having fun with this. They're uh, doing respect to the movies they, they grew up with. It's okay to say B movie, but it's not a B movie. They're yeah. just showing respect to that era, I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I feel like B movie definitely downgrades it like as a whole. You know, like when you think about B movie, uh, yeah. yeah, you think about all oh, automatically it's going to be bad. And it's, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, it's not like we give horror movies like the you know five out of fives all the time or four out of five four point five like that's that's kind of you know you got to be hitting on all cylinders to get that mm-hmm. that high rating especially for a horror movie you know yeah and I, yeah, I, I, I think, I think, yeah this is definitely one higher up there so 
I'm going to cut it short, man, or not. I'm going to cut it short. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, end it uh, because, man, we've gone over two hours. This was great, though. I, I love talking oh, cool. this with you, my friend. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, dope. man, hope you guys had a good time. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe before you guys leave. Uh, we're also on social media now on Instagram at Why Won't You Die Podcast. Also over there on Twitter at, I believe it's, um, Why Won't You? No, it's WWYD horror pod yeah can you believe someone already had why would you die podcast like what the fuck who has that really <laughs> i believe it didn't let me take it so <laughs> all right but i'll put all this information on the screen or down below guys so you guys can check us out also if you guys are listening on spotify please make sure to give us a rating there's a rating system on there now too so out of five stars please um, i feel like an uber driver now please if you liked your ride give us a five star <laughs> You know, give us a five, man. Five five to keep us alive, I'll tell you that. So, uh, And I don't know if there's a review section on Spotify, but if there is, you know, hey, write us a good review if you guys can. Or if not, I mean, what can we work on? Uh, and I would love to hear you guys' thoughts, man, in the comments. Uh, because a lot of people along the way were talking about what movies they would want uh, us to review next to. And I'm like, man, you guys just drop them in the chat. We'll talk about them or, or drop them in the comments and I'll, I'll go over them with Q. And then maybe we'll, we'll talk about some of those movies, man, that you guys like. So yeah, that being said, Q reviews. We're out, baby. Do we have the next one? Do we know? Do we know? Uh, I don't even know what's coming up, man. I know Megan just dropped recently. I don't know if you're, uh, if you're up for talking about that. Cause you were like, yeah, it's a good theater experience, but maybe watch it at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, the only bad thing about begging at home is 19 bucks, but I'm down to talk to, to talk about begging. Yeah. Oh, okay. Amazon right now. So that yeah. might be that might be coming up. I know Shutter's dropping movies left and right too. So, we'll definitely go over it, but definitely catch us on the next episode, guys, episode 4. I'm not sure where it's going to be. Yeah, but uh thank you guys so much for joining us and we are out. Peace. Peace. I'm just warming up. You pathetic worm. Why won't you die? No! Game over.